What's up, guys? Welcome to episode eight of the Hive Mind Podcast. Two months in a row. It's it's pretty good. Haven't missed a show yet. It's mm-hmm. hopefully we can keep that up. We need to get that intro music though, where it's like, and then you then you can intro. Yeah, maybe oh, the, it's because it's like so flat. It's yeah, like, it is Hi. a little flat. But whenever I watch podcasts, I always skip it. I'm like, not talking. I always about, skip that shit. I'm not talking about a long intro either. I'm talking about something just like do 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 do, just like a little warm. Yeah, maybe those long ones. That's you guys are fucking up when you do that. Stop doing that shit. Yeah. Uh, there's this one po- podcast I listen to where they literally have a guy rapping. Like, one of the hosts of the podcast starts rapping about the podcast. And to his credit, it's actually pretty good, but most of the times it's just too damn long. Uh, so anyway, uh, you said you had a few topics. You want to yes. just jump in? I want to get into mine uh, fairly early because I don't want to forget them. <laughs> Sure. So, so one of them is, and I'm hoping that this isn't like something that you saw. Um, this fucking guy named Trip created a Kickstarter to create what he calls um, a open world Star Wars MMORPG. And before Disney uh, rips that shit down, mm. and before Disney came, people were basically flagging the thing, saying like, "Look, Disney will come after you." take it down they eventually came to him and said look we own that property you cannot create a kickstarter to make a game but it raised eighteen thousand dollars before it was taken down i am unaware whether or not the guy hit the refund button and the money all got sent back to everybody or not i have no idea what website was this on kickstarter I know that some of the Kickstarter websites, like some of the crowdfunding websites, have a thing to where if the if it's not like if it wasn't <laughs> successful, then everybody gets all their money back, and that's part of the the safe haven of it. Yeah, and I've also seen stories of people going, "Well, whoops, we couldn't make yep. that happen. Guess I'll just keep this money," and then they do. Um, so, but the real discussion about this is not whether or not the world needs an open world Star Wars MMO. The, cl- the clear answer <laughs> Star is Star Wars: yes. The Old Republic. Yeah, Star Wars Galaxies is basically what this kid wants to remake. Yep. The real question, then the real topic of discussion is: Is this twenty-year-old guy named Trip a fucking just full-on autistic retard? For or thinking he's not, he could- and he just scammed people out of t- eighteen grand, and he knew exactly uh, what he was doing. Yeah. That's, it's either or, but uh, uh, on uh, GameSpot, he basically says, like, he's not a very good programmer in his words, and he's, quote, not even... <laughs> Might as well uh, just go ahead and jump into the deep end of making a fucking MMO, the right. hardest game genre to make. And he says, quote, he's an even worse artist. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> apparently, people were, like, talking to him and being like, oh, I'm going to report you to Disney, I'm going to report you to Disney, and they're going to sue your ass, and fuck you, you shouldn't even have made this. So people were obviously angry. Um, <laughs> he has he has a giant post uh, in response to everyone because uh, he's been interviewed by like Kotaku and really yeah. Um, I'm gonna summarize what he's talking about here. As he says, he said, um, and I why quote, is anyone taking this guy seriously at all? Well, I mean, you know, it's news. That's insane. Does he have like concept art of this at all? Like, does no. he have anything he, like to show what he's been working on? I, as far as I've seen, nothing. Why do people care about this? Because it's a Star Wars open world MMO. Yeah, but like, Disney I could say down. that I'm making the greatest first person shooter of all time. Come crowdfund me and I have nothing to show. Like, why mm-hmm. would anyone care? Like, why does anyone care about this if he hasn't shown anything? Maybe it's really boring right now. <laughs> there really isn't Maybe like, other, yeah, other these news the gaming Oculus, websites don't have anything else to talk about, outside I guess. Outside of the price tag on the Oculus Rift, there really isn't anything else to talk about. Maybe that's why. I guess. But, but he said that, um, uh, he said, I'd like to start off by saying I'm sorry to Disney for using their logo and name. <laughs> Having said that, I find it very disturbing that you want to report me to them, uh, talking to the people who are reporting him. Uh, as if they didn't already know. <laughs> what the fuck? It's like so this, this guy. Retarded. This guy understands that Disney knows that he that, that Disney's going to come after him. In this statement, <laughs> either this guy's retarded or he's a genius. There's like no in between. Like either he's so dumb that he just doesn't realize that his entire project is just never going to happen because Disney 
does not fuck around with people using their IP at all. And they just paid whatever four billion dollars for it. So he also says Disney was created because Walt Disney had a dream, was it not? And then he starts talking about nothing related to that statement whatsoever. Um, <laughs> secondly, I am taking this Kickstarter down myself. Disney has not contacted me to tell me to shut it down. For those of you who think um, you own Disney, what? Uh, I am taking this Kickstarter down because I very much respect Disney and I do not want this to get too big. Uh, <laughs> I love all their pirates of the Caribbean movies. <laughs> oh, I thought it was I thought it was a different sentence completely. I always wanted to be Captain Jack, but I think Mr. Depp is too good to be replaced. I have faith that somewhere in the future a game like what? this the one guy I is described off the fucking rails. Be, this, <laughs> How did he raise 18 grand? I'm not making what this up. What the fuck? Uh, I have faith that somewhere in the future a game like this like the the one I described, the Star Wars one. Uh, will be made by Disney slash EA slash Lucasfilm slash Bioware or whoever is going. That's to like do. a classic third grade run on sense. <laughs> like, no. yeah, I, like this dude goes from talking about like Disney and him, like you guys think you own Disney, to like, oh, I really wanted to make this Star Wars game, to like, oh, I really like Pirates of the Caribbean, and then he starts talking about Johnny Depp, and then he goes back to Star Wars. Like, god damn. It gets better. And this is the last paragraph. It's a third, like it's a, ter- a third, a three paragraph little statement. Thirdly, I know my spelling and grammar sucks, but all you need is the force and you will do okay in life. I wrote the entire thing on my phone, or I wrote this entire thing on my phone in uh, Texas with Juan, or in a bar. He names the name of the bar. So I did not care for spelling mistakes because of that. And I really don't think I'd actually be doing this. What? Uh, as many of you pointed out, I am highly unqualified. The point of this whole <laughs> no Kickstarter, shit. <laughs> the point of this whole Kickstarter is to not let your dreams be dreams. Don't say tomorrow, just do it. Dude, this has got to be a troll. <laughs> after after that, dude. <laughs> after that, it's got to be a troll. Thanks for all the bi- thanks for all the backers. It made this whole thing extra funny. Devin Trip. Who are your parents? Oh, wait. Did he Seriously. say, wait, thanks to all the backers that made this thing extra funny. That's how we yeah. ended it. Thanks. Thanks for all. Thanks for all the backers. It made this whole thing extra funny. Oh, that's so it like, was a joke. That's like his PS. That's like his PS at the end. He doesn't type PS. He doesn't say thanks to all the backers. Like, thank you guys for backing. Yeah, me. that's a says, joke. He says, thanks for all the backers, in which I think Devin Tripp, in his mind, thinks the word backers means money. And he just was... <laughs> It's like, what the fuck, really? I think this is a troll. After after that little, like, <laughs> ha-ha. That's like the ha-ha got you moment. Yeah. But that, apparently, dude, that makes but, me feel bad for all the people that go on Kickstarter and actually have good ideas. If that fucking idiot can get 18 grand. Yeah. God and, damn. Uh, apparently, in the in the other interviews on the other, he, like, there's been, like, recorded interviews and stuff. He's he's actually, like, sincere about everything he says. He actually kind of does speak like this, like a, like a little kid. You know? Um, so... Well, maybe maybe this is just some guy with Asperger's who's like, I have a really good funny idea and I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Let's jump into the deep end of creating an MMO when you're a not a good programmer, b not a good artist, and c can't write a sentence. It's yeah. Not looking you have, good. You have to be able to. There's like rules on Kickstarter. It's like you have to be able to start the concept yourself as the person creating the Kickstarter. This guy's idea you can't, was you, probably. It was probably start to, to start an idea because he talks about how Walt Disney had a dream. Well, like, this is his dream. If he gets enough money, he can hire enough people to then start making this game when he but himself he cannot fucking do anything. Disney, yeah. Man, he can't because it's Disney, too. It's like, even if it, even if it wasn't even tied to Disney. Even like, if this guy was brilliant and he had, like, a, and knew exactly what he was doing and had an amazing team, he still can't do it because of Disney. Like, right, but I, it's well, a no go from the start. What I'm saying is if this guy was trying to do something and it wasn't a Star Wars thing, it was like, oh, here's this idea I have. It's really great. Yeah. But I can't start doing it. I don't know how to fucking program a game or anything. I'm raising the money to hire a team of people. That in itself is still fucking dumb because <laughs> you don't know shit. You just came up with an idea. You're like, well, here's a good idea. How about we make World of Warcraft but fucking better? <laughs> yeah. But we'll call it something else. There's my idea. Give me a shitload of money. And I will find the people that we need to make this game happen. That's this guy's idea. What a fucking idiot. Yep. Yeah, it's... 
I think it's a troll. Like, I think I think we're going to see some mm-hmm. posts on 4chan saying, like, LOL, look at this shit. <laughs> I got on all these major gaming websites, and I'm just fucking around. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you there. I, I wouldn't doubt it. Um, <laughs> my other topic, just to get what I want to talk about out of the way right away, not for any reason or anything. Yeah, sure. I, I'm just really, I'm really into this. Um, have you seen that there's going to be a Pokemon type game surrounded by Rick and Morty? What? So it's a Rick and Morty Pokemon game. Like if you think of the Game Boy games. Oh, it's like, it's like a Pokemon game in the Rick and Morty universe. Uh, yeah, it's called Pocket Morty. Okay. The first 52 Mortys in Pocket Morty uh, got dropped, I think, on the 6th. I'm gonna link is this like article. a legit game, or is this like some yeah, Flash no, it's, game? it's a real thing. Dan Harmon and Rick... Um, Rick. Uh, <laughs> Dan Harmon and Justin Rowland confirmed it on Twitter. They're like, yeah, it's a fucking game. So look for it soon. It comes out, <clears throat> like, the 14th or something like that? There's various oh, wow. Mortys. So, I, I saw this and I'm like, we talked about Pokemon ad nauseum. Uh, Is there this any up. Pokemon clones? Like, Pokemon's a game that I feel like could be cloned in, in by so many things. I'm sure there are Pokemon clones. Like, but in, in for example, if you compare like Pokemon to Yokai Watch, you don't throw a ball at an animal and then capture it. Oh, I'm just talking about from the from the gameplay perspective. Like, I feel like what Pokemon does from a gameplay perspective is very easy. Like I feel like they could, they could, there could be some sort of like Dungeons and Dragons style game, in a Pokemon like with Pokemon style gameplay where you walk around from a top down view and. Of course. And, yeah, I'm just yeah, curious. Like, I I I haven't played handheld games in so long. I just don't know if that's like a common thing now. Because looking at this gameplay, it's like legit fucking Pokemon. <laughs> but mm-hmm. Rick and Morty. No, it's it's made to look like you're yeah. playing an old school Pokemon. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. I, I'll be, I'm gonna be, it's going to be mobile devices only, I think. Yeah, I've only uh, watched so. a few Rick and Morty episodes, but they're pretty good. Um, uh, I, I would, I'm going to be that guy who's going to tell you it is very much worth your time to oh, watch. Oh, yeah. yeah I've heard of, a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds yeah, they're very say smart. that it's just very good. And it's very good. And, 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 I, I've and, seen like three episodes, and I'm, I think it's good. Like, There's just like yeah. so many like little quips with that show like that aren't, like they're just very minor things, like how like, how like, Rick will just do some, like, fucking weird thing with his, like, face or something. And it's, like, very, like, small stuff like that that makes the show good. Yeah, the pilot is a little weird. They tried doing a, a, a couple of things in the pilot that just did not cross over into the regular story. Like, I know what you're talking about with Rick's face. Um, but it's good. It's good all around. You can yeah, jump into good. any episode and you, you won't be lost. So it's great. Um, yeah, Pocket, Pocket Morty's. Pocket January fourteenth, coming out soon. Coming okay. Out soon. Uh, was that you? You want to pitch anything else? Or, no, those are the two things. You want to really go to all, ye old fucking faithful Donald uh, Trump uh, with his, well, you you know, his first political ad? That's oh, not a joke. Um, yes, I saw it. I was actually talking about it on my stream about Dude. how it's like all the shit that Trump. Just for those of you who have not seen this, all the shit that Trump has said that's just like fucking nuts. Condensed into like a serious political ad. It's thirty seconds long, and it's it. Here, I'm just I'm just gonna play it. Uh, like I'm just gonna play it just so just people play can the audio. Hear it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's only thirty seconds long. Let me try to find. It. I posted it on my Facebook page because it's just absurd. Uh, my favorite yeah. part is where they fade Hillary. Yeah, Obama's. you you, you want to just cl- sync it up or no? Well, no, no. I've seen it. Oh, you've seen it. Okay, I've seen it. You can just, yeah, You l- can just tell me when it. You can start talking. Yeah. About it. Right. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. The politicians can pretend it's something else, but Donald Trump calls it radical Islamic terrorism. That's why he's calling for a temporary shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until bang, we can bang, figure bang. out what's going on. He'll quickly cut the head off ISIS and take their oil. Cut the head off he'll stop ISIS illegal and immigration by oil. building a wall uh-huh. on our southern border that Mexico <laughs> will pay for. We will make Dude, America that's just it's so... It's so absurd. It's it goes from like we're gonna build a wall so the Mexicans can't come in, and then we're gonna cut off the head of ISIS and take their oil. I think there's all there's a lot of favorite parts in there for me. It's uh we're gonna build a wall and make Mexico pay for it somehow. Dude, it's I just don't... like everything insane about what he wants to do condensed in a thirty second ad, and he's like, I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. Uh huh. 
and, yeah, and it's, as it's as I predicted on the fucking hive mind number four or whatever when he uh, said that anti-Muslim thing, uh, it only helped him. It only helped him. He is more popular now than he's ever been. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Um, yeah, the talk about a scary fucking uh, campaign ad. I mean, yeah, some some in the past we've seen like. I forget who's that asshole who who didn't win against Obama, uh, McCain or but, Romney? Romney. Uh, uh, it's like Romney's ads are attacking Obama in like such a way that just made like no. So it made McCain. This is next it made level. Romney look crazy, and it's like yeah, but that, yes, this is absolutely this is absolutely next level. Like Donald what? Trump, like in the way he's like, it's like so forward. It's not like he's trying to word it in like a way that. Uh, would make it sound a little less extreme. He's like, no, we're stopping all Muslims from coming into the country. And then bam, like no, like no, like softening the blow at all. And then goes on to, we're going to cut off the head of ISIS and take their oil. And then boom, onto the next thing. We're yeah. going to build a wall and the Mexicans will pay for it. And then Here's I'm Donald Trump and I approve this message. Right. Like, what the fuck? Make America great again. Uh, yeah, by tip- by being an asshole bully to everyone in the world. Yeah, okay, great. I, yeah. I'm looking so forward to this. <laughs> See, I, I'm not like so against the bully part because I do feel like the United States is like we're like we are a bunch of pussies. Like we really could kind of just like put our foot down and it would help us a lot in a lot of ways. But Donald Trump is a fucking madman. Like this, this oh, is yeah. this is very like Hitler esque. Like. Yeah a lot of the things he does and a, and a lot of the way that people are like rallying for him mm-hmm. is very scary. Oh, and I can't wait. Cause I mean, world war two, man, if, if there was no world war two, we wouldn't have a whole lot of shit to talk about. There wouldn't be that many cool shows. We need the future. I, 40 years from now when like, there's like Netflix original series, Trump, what was really going on? And like fucking after he's president for eight years and it's, it's going to be great. Be wow. great entertainment. Wait, you just said after he's president for eight years, you're... Well, this guy's going to get elected. He's going to I, get elected. I, I feel like it's it would it's too poetic for him not to get elected. And then like, he, it's like he, it's the Cinderella story, and it's just going to happen. It's going to be fucking bananas. And if he gets elected, my my prediction is that he will just get elected again. There's no who are you going to who who it, yeah who are you we get? talked about Even this on crazier the, on... like you're getting a fucking Donald Trump version of a Democrat to be he's just. I'm crazier than Donald Trump. Is that the fucking pillar of order now in America for politics? Like, Yeah. Is he setting such a fucking standard? Like, I get that he wants to say something and say, like, this is what I want. We want to do it. Here's the goal. Instead of, like, wording it all eloquently. Yeah, I know. I appreciate the fuck out of that. I'll mm-hmm. be honest. I appreciate the fuck out of the, the Donald Trump style of politics. Right. But maybe just not the guy. Yeah. I... Just it is gangster as fuck that he is just so forward with all this shit. He's like, Mexico will pay for the fucking wall. Yeah, fuck Muslims, and we're gonna take the oil. Like, not like you know, we want to stabilize the region and you know trade oil. Like, no, he's just like, fuck you. We're gonna go over there and kill all of you and take your oil. Like, yeah, that's the, the word, that, that's pretty hate. gangster. He's over as fuck with the with the crowd. He's just he's over. They love him, and yeah. it's it's just the yeah, like you were saying, like the, the the typical thing that you would hear would be like, well, we're gonna we're gonna talk with this country and sort of like come to a, a peaceful yeah. agreement. This guy Trump's like no, Trump's no like no, you got what we want. We're gonna kill you. It's come up on your head and take it. Take your oil. I'm president. It's like what the fuck? Wow, dude. Yeah. Ah. Uh. It's it, dude. This election season is going to be so hilarious, and we're gonna benefit from it because in multiple ways. I don't know if you remember the last election year, but YouTube ads go through the fucking roof when when that shit starts coming to a close. Yeah, because they gotta that. get you every way they can. They yeah, gotta, dude, it's just constant you. onslaught of super high paying ads, and plus we're gonna have so much to talk about because it's just, it, dude. It is the he's probably the most entertaining presidential presidential candidate I've I've encountered in my lifetime so far. It's mm. just pure fucking hilarity every time, uh, but it's also very scary. Just want everybody to understand something. I don't want Trump to like cause World War Three, but it's just entertaining to me 
like, well, like what, what you said, like, look at what's happening, and it doesn't seem like we, there's no way to stop it. Like, this is exactly how Hitler. Yeah, it is exactly and, how. And, like, and the next thing you know, it's like, yeah. uh, Mexico, we don't like you. Fuck them. And they got this. They have those gangs down there in Mexico, the drug gangs and shit. Like, yeah, they the have cartels. internal wars with themselves. I fucking, you know what? I'm just going to say it. If Trump gets elected and one day he's like, oh, yeah, war shit that's going on in Mexico, fuck them. We're going to go down there and solve the problem ourselves. And then we, like, go into Mexico and we, like, take a chunk of it. And it's, like, now it's part of America. <laughs> that happening that in would my be lifetime? Some shit to do. That's Did insane. He do? That's insane. And I feel like that could happen. So, mm. you know, whatever. Yeah, like you said, it's an entertaining time. <laughs> yeah, I do feel like it's almost gotten to the point to where it would just be, it's too poetic for him not to win. It's just too crazy. Well, yeah, because the guy's the guy's a businessman, right? So, like, he would, he's all about thinking about profits. Like, how is this going to benefit him financially? But, again, the guy has, like, so much money. So, clearly, he wants to become president. This isn't, like, a joke. Unless, yeah. Unless this well, is a joke, but I, I just can't. I, I, I don't think it's a joke. Uh, just because, like, if you think about it from his perspective, like, he's got it all except, like, real power. Like, yeah, he's, he's a powerful dude because when you're rich, you're powerful, obviously, but... You know, if you're a billionaire, what do you have left to do? Like, people what's like, the next thing you go for other than being the president? People like that have such a, a ego about them that, like, everything that they do is, like, amazing. Like, everything I touch becomes a mega success. And they, then it's a, that's how they feel in their own heads. And, like, and I understand this from the perspective of wrestling because fucking Vince McMahon had to come on to... He had to come on and be a part of the TV show. Vince McMahon is 70 years old. He doesn't need to be on TV taking bumps. I like how you him. somehow fucking got wrestling. No, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. This is exactly because Vince McMahon must think that everything he thinks of is a fucking great idea. And then when we, we as fans who watch wrestling watch this shit, it's like, like, no, this is really stupid. You don't. Why did why did you get Superman punched in the face? And no one cared. Dude, he's Nothing like the happened. fucking George Lucas of wrestling. He's yes. Like, get George the fuck Lucas, out of here. George Lucas, Vince McMahon. Donald Trump, they all are like, they have that ego about them. We're like, the only thing that can save us is me because I'm so fucking cool and I'm, I've created all this success and I'm a billionaire and there's no money, there's no more money in the world left for me to earn. What do I do? Well, I'll fix America by running for president. That's kind of how I feel the persona, the, the persona of Trump is. Yeah. And uh, then you sit that next to Hitler, and it's like fucking the same thing. And that's what people don't realize about Hitler is that he came to power legally. It's not like he, I mean, yeah, he, he sort of declared himself dictator after he came into power. Uh, but he was very popular, and he came on up, you know, saying a lot of this shit in the same way that Donald Trump is saying. Yep. Um, and if you are one of those people who's like, hey, yeah, fuck all those Muslims, guess what? That's exactly how the German people were about Jews back then. It's the same thing. There's no, like, difference. Yeah. Out outside of being, like, a really, really knowledgeable Hitler person, I really see the parallels. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, a, I'm not a historian on Nazi Germany, but mm. it's, you know, the, very, the little I do know, it is... The parallels are, are That crazy. campaign ad, man, that'll, that'll scare <laughs> that you. That campaign shitless. ad is crazy! Like... That is it's, the it's that's the, the most one. baller campaign ad I've ever seen in terms of just being out there. Like, you know what? There's, he there's does going not to, give a fuck at all. Yeah, there's going to be like at least ten more campaign ads for Trump, but be, between now and the election, I can't wait. Oh, for dude, it. they're like, dude, ten? I mean, maybe like a hundred. I don't know. It's I'm gonna just, be a lot more than ten. But I, I want them all to be like this, dude. I, I want them to ramp like, up. I want. It's gotta get crazier than that. I don't know how. I, <laughs> That that campaign ad literally hit everything. It wasn't you know you know how typically like campaign ads they have like a theme like like that thirty second ad will be about immigration and that's the whole ad and why Donald Trump is like the best on immigration. He just mm -hmm. was goes fuck Muslims, fuck Mexicans, and fuck ISIS. We're gonna take the oil, and yeah, it's just bam 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 bam. Like he hits all of them within like five seconds of each other, and it it honestly doesn't really make sense. And then he's like, I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. The way and everybody it, loses their mind. The way I look at it is that again, he's a businessman. He's all about profit. He probably sat down with like some the marketing team that is around him for his for his stuff, and he said, "Let's just get all the shit on on the table, all in one ad, and that's it." Talk about all he my points running in his one campaign. fucking ad, <laughs> yeah. dude. He's running his campaign brilliantly. <laughs> like whether you hate him or love him, you have to admit that his campaign is like the most efficient machine 
ever. Like, he has spent no money, like, at all. On his campaign. Like, he's self-financed it, which I guess is probably part of the reason he hasn't spent that much. But uh, I gotta admit that his campaign and the fact that he hasn't spent that much money is pretty impressive for him to yeah. be as in the limelight as he is. And, and to be honest, when I, one thing I don't like about politics, not to get all politicky and shit, but, like, I don't like money in politics. I don't like that a oh, yeah, company, no like a corporation. Yeah. yeah, like, a lot of us know that our, our politicians are bought and paid for by corporations to say, like, now you will make this law if you get elected so that Walmart uh, doesn't have to give their employees uh, the day off on Thanksgiving because fuck you. And we know that. So, but Trump, I don't think he's been donated to by any like major corporation no, I think it's from, just been from my him. understanding he really is spending his own money and he's only yeah. spent like he spent i think a little over a million dollars but even if he had spent five like it that's a fraction of what these other dudes are spending right and, and it, so the, it's the gangster the image that i that i'm trying to paint here for those of you who don't understand or you're not very much into politics or you don't know this if so and so politician is a nice guy and he's got a face that you like and he says things you like, but he's bought and paid for by a corporate company, that means he's corrupt. Is Donald Trump now simply skipping the middleman and he's just the guy who owns the company and he's like, "Fuck it, I'll just run"? Because that could be bad too, yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, because he could be he could sign into law some shit that like makes it so that rich people are on top, you know, or something. I don't know, dude. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's entertaining. Fucking, it scares me, and it's entertaining, and I fucking love it. <laughs> yeah, I know it's one of those things where I don't want him to be president, but then at the same time, I, I kind of do just just to see, like just to see. This is this is what you want. You don't want him to be president, but you want there to exist a reality where he becomes yeah, president, and, I just and you can watch reality. it on television. Yeah, it's on Netflix. You can check it out. Like what happened today in the Trump version? It's like. Fucking wars happening. You sit, yeah. Everybody be sitting there eating their popcorn and shit. They love Dude, that. Imagine, imagine if Donald Trump did become president, and for eight years it was like eight years of prosperity. Like the economy was back, and the U.S. the U.S. turned into Dubai. Like we're like just kicking ass, and then oh Donald Trump actually becomes a fucking the dictator of the United States, and we're all just like fuck it. You know what? Let him do his thing. We're living in paradise. Like what a what a mind homes, fuck would that homes be? Homes are affordable. Minimum wage is up. Yeah, the college Emperor, is Emperor cheaper. Trump is up there, and minimum wage is like fifty seven dollars an hour, and we're all like inflation is Lamborghinis down. And shit. Everything's affordable. You can buy a car without freaking out about it. Credit cards aren't a huge risk. Oh my God, we would be living in our own personal like paradise in our country and then in the reality is everyone Donald else around is just bombing people and shit taking in re yeah in, real in the reality he's like taking over sweden and shit and he's like what no don't worry about it Tr you know new new trump yeah next thing you know there's like a giant laser gun on in florida that like shoots other fucking countries it's like oh okay yeah but anyway no, no. <laughs> you were talking about um politicians being bought and paid for well i've got a crazy uh, statistic for you that's so my whole thing is I don't think that like the, the thing that irritates me the most about like politicians being bought and paid for it's not so much the like them getting laws passed that uh, like let them I don't know keep Walmart open on Thanksgiving or whatever the hell you just said it's mostly it's just the, like it's the deregulation tax. it's the oh and not, not even the deregulation that irritates me it's the fact that they don't pay any fucking taxes oh, dude. taxes yep Dude, the tax dodging is fucking stupid. No, 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 Zyback. There's like, a loophole, and they they just found yeah, the loophole. Yeah, yeah. No, no. So get this shit. Google, guess how much... Just take a gander at how much income tax they paid last year. Just, just guess. You want me to guess? Yeah, just the percentage. Oh, I don't even know how much Google is worth. I, I don't have the data to come up with an answer for this. I would say at least over one billion. No, no, they're just a percentage of income tax. Oh, you mean percentage? Yeah, the percentage. How much, how much they pay? Yeah, like tax? yeah. Out of all profit, um, fifteen uh, percent at a minimum. Hmm. No, not even close. Two point four percent. Oh God. They pay two point four percent income tax because That's... they license all of their tech to Bermuda. 
So all of the shit that makes Google all their money, like all of the the search algorithms and Google itself, they license all of that to Bermuda, which has zero percent income tax, and they don't they don't pay taxes on essentially all of the shit that they make money on. That's that's, that's a little that's that ridiculous. is fucking absurd. So that kind of shit, if 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 you are not pol- if you're not really into sales politics, sales tax is what fif- like fifteen. <clears throat> Right? Sales tax? Sir, sales tax is ten, 10, right? It's different from state to state. Yeah, I think it's yeah. like ten it's like ten or fifteen, I think, right? Mine I think ours in Minnesota is like seven and a half. Yeah. But two point four percent and they're making billions? Like get uh, the fuck out of here. That's th- that kind of shit has got to stop. And what sucks is when you take that as a that's a real statistic. Oh yeah, you that's take, real as fuck. You take that and this is not just Google, by the way. This is like all other huge companies. Well, they all do it. And I, and, and I can't blame them for doing it because if they don't do it, then they aren't being competitive. Like, I, like the loopholes are there. You're stupid if you don't take advantage of them. But they got to close. The, that This is absurd. Mm-hmm. And the thing of it is that I hate is if you take that fact and you find a person who says, we're in such debt, China's going to have to buy us and we're going to be like in debt to China and we're going to have something bad's going to happen or whatever. You take that stat to that kind of person and go, this is why we're in debt and we can't pay off our debt. They fucking lose their mind. They go like, oh, there's no way. They're only paying 2%. There's no way. It's unbelievable. They just they, they dismiss it and they move on and they blame something else. When in reality, this is what's going on. Yeah. And these are the people who are voting for Trump, by the way. These are, <laughs> these are the fucking people like, yeah, we love you. Fuck the Muslims. What? Oh, they only pay 2% in tax. Fuck them. I don't care. Google. <laughs> it's like, Jesus. Yeah, the the taxing of it. Like, I'm... I'm I would say I lean towards more conservative views than I do like liberal views. Mm-hmm. But dude, the corporate they got to fix the corporations dodging taxes. Like it is such a fucking huge gap. Like they they we could be bringing in so much more tax revenue just from the corporations that are dodging these taxes like in absurd fashion. Mm-hmm. And Google is one of the more extreme companies when it comes to dodging taxes because they can be because all of their stuff is like tech and over the internet and shit like that. Um, but you know, Apple and all the other ones are doing it just as much as they can. They just can't do it as efficiently as Google can. And I don't understand why more people do not consider dodging their taxes like that or only paying one or two or three percent. Why they don't consider that act an, an act of unpatriotic uh, symbolism? Because yeah. you don't love America. If if you are not an American. If you well, if I owned a corporation, I would be doing the same thing. But I understand that doesn't that. mean this shit doesn't need to be fixed. Like it's I absurd. understand that. And the politicians who who are bought and paid for by these co- these corporations that are, that basically say to them, "You don't fuck up our loopholes on tax." Yep. That's why that the, so it's an Ouroboros. The whole thing just eats itself, and it's just continuing to do that. You're not American. You want this country to fucking die if you don't get rid of it. So just to spread a little word, talking about money and taxes or money and taxes. Money in politics. <clears throat> this is going to go real quick. It's just a. It's just a URL. It's wolf-pack.com. You go there. That's how you can contribute to getting money out of politics. Because you, if enough people want it to happen, they they can make a an, a an amendment to the constitution that removes certain laws that are clearly crooked. And this is something that has been around in this country for ever since the beginning of the United States. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I don't get an opportunity to plug that enough, but I really like it. And Minnesota, my state is down for that. So, yeah, I'm all for um, you know, for the most part, I'm all for lower taxes and all that shit. And I and I get that you don't want to like clamp down too hard on businesses because it hurts small businesses. Like I, I understand it, but the the corporate tax dodge <laughs> shit is mm-hmm. is next next level. Like I I've, all, all the there's a bunch of crazy statistics. I can't bring them up off the top of my head, but Essentially, the American people are paying their fair share in taxes just fine. We don't, like, even if we raised the taxes on the, the top 1%, like, that, it, it doesn't really matter, really, if we tax them more. I mean, yeah, it would help a lot, uh, but really, we just need to fix the fucking corporation shit first. Mm. That's, dude, it's it's comical. 2.4%. 2. fucking 4%. People Literally, wonder, people on the streets pay higher tax than that, like significantly higher. And you wonder why people are like, "Well, that whole ninety-nine percent thing—that's just a bunch of bullshit." Really? Okay. 
Yeah, come I mean, talk, come talk to me later. You, if you know someone on this planet who owns a Lamborghini, I'm I am pretty fucking sure they either are partial owners of a corporation or they're somehow related to a giant corporation. There's no fucking way some guy's like, oh yeah, I just uh, started my own business from the ground up and now I'm a fucking millionaire or something like that. That's, that's that doesn't happen in this mm. country. This fucking uh, sushi know. restaurant down the street can't even open up because they're busy. They're do- There's literally two people remodeling this building to save as much money as possible. And they've been doing it for like a year and a half. I know so, quite a few people that are, you know, pull- that have done very well. Like, I'm, I'm not against rich people. Like, I know one of the things, one of the things I hate uh, about the whole, like, 99%, 1% thing is the, the, the pure hatred of anyone that has any sort of success I'm definitely not in that ballpark. I just want them to pay taxes. That's just it. Uh, mm-hmm. And from what I can tell, like, yeah, they, we could tax the rich a little bit more heavily. Uh, but they do, you know, people that make a lot of money, they do pay a lot of taxes. They are There are higher tax brackets. And sure, they have, uh, you know, financial advisors and shit that probably help them save a lot of money on their taxes. And they probably should be paying a little more, or at least paying their fair share. Uh, but the corporation's... <laughs> no, they, they they don't pay nearly enough. Most of them, anyway. Uh, all the ones that can get away with it don't pay shit. Um, if you have that kind of income, and you're worried about how much you pay in tax, trust me, that is the least of your fucking problems. Yeah. That's all. It's just if you have that. Oh, oh, I gotta pay X number of percent in my tax. Oh, oh shit, I can't live without that. You know, eighty grand I had to pay in tax. But but in the meantime, you made like. Four hundred thousand dollars this year. I just, I just want to pull you out of your world and put you in mine yeah. for like See, I'm fucking not, I'm not, one week. I'm not like, I'm not the guy that's campaigning for taxing rich individuals more. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't be against it, but uh, yeah, the main thing I, the, the main thing in my opinion needs to happen is just the loopholes. That's got to be fixed. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, again, don't want to tax you more, but pay your fucking taxes. That's yeah, it. pretty much. Just pay them. Don't fucking be like, well, well my, my Jewish lawyer over here said I can get around. Yeah, if you if you fucking have blah, blah, all blah. of your assets that you make money with licensed in fucking Bermuda. Or all of the and money. And it's not like is Google it? is doing business in Bermuda. It's like the most obvious. Yeah. It's the most. It's not like Google is making all of their billions of dollars in Bermuda. Like, get the fuck out of here. It's all coming before from you, the U.S. Before you even said Bermuda had no income tax, I thought it had like some, right? No, it's zero. And for, for a second there, I thought, wow, Bermuda must look fucking awesome right now. It must be just like this utopia of all it's their tax nice, money. from what I've heard. Oh, sure. And it, I mean, it always all has these, a, It's almost like, like scumbag, shitty Bermuda. Like, they know what they're fucking doing. Like, you make your country have zero. Like, they're benefiting from it, obviously. Like, Bermuda's yeah. obviously benefiting from it. Um, but. Yeah, that is a wild statistic, for sure. Yeah, that's that's one of those ones that makes you, makes you pissed. 2.4 percent oh um, and on the topic of uh you brought this up you brought up that other statistic that i didn't i was like whoa it blew my fucking mind that what is it like 60 something percent of americans oh i can't remember the stat off the top of my head i'd have to look they back in my they don't have what the stat was 60 per 60 something percent of working americans don't have a thousand dollars saved yeah. in their bank account i would like to share you with can you hear this yep i'd like to share with you a little story uh i did some freelance editing work for a company out in california i'm not gonna like throw them under the bus or anything but uh they sent me a check this check is for two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars nice it's a fraud check fuck it's fraud took it to the bank and they said no that is a fraud and it has something to do with the bottom numbers and the the different treasury zones throughout the country and like it's just it's fraud and so this is the second time i have worked hard to earn over a thousand dollars in a profession i'm good at where I didn't get paid. So talk about people not getting that money in their bank account. Why are you not throwing this company under the bus? Because this, the check is, I can tell you the name of the company on the check. It's Finale Family Partnership. But that's not who I worked with. They're, they basically create this like false business and then they send you a check. But we're talking about, excuse me, we're talking about a fraudulent check, not a, check that bounces so yeah yeah but what, what do they have you doing they filmed stuff for a commercial for their business that they needed an editor to put together but they had this like giant fucking like they wanted this and this and they just couldn't stop they were like we want this in the commercial not the commercial sorry 
um, it's for their like website. So they wanted videos up that display this and that and this and that. And I was like, okay. Because at first I'm like, you're in California. You can find like an editor like anywhere. But they wanted to do it for cheap. And they posted it on Craigslist in my town. And I'm like, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to anybody who wants to do anything related to what I'm good at on Craigslist. Like, uh, like what you do for, the, for your place, um, for the vehicle, the motor yeah. vehicle place. Car dealership. Why can't I think of that word? Uh, our local car dealership is looking for a social media specialist. Yep. And I'm like, uh, hello, hi. And I applied for it. I'll probably hear back from them. But um, so that's, you know, I see that on Craigslist and I'm like, oh, I attack it. So shit like this where it's like, oh, we want, we have all this footage, but we don't know how to competently put it together and make it make sense. And I said, oh, I can do that. And so it took are me you like, like a month. pretty sure these people just like ripped you off? Like mm-hmm. They absolutely did because this has happened before. So they probably have friends or they know people who are like, here's this loophole where we can just do this. And the guy will do the work, and uh, boom, we just we just pay him with a fake check because you know you, you get know this check. the name of the company that you were working for. It's probably not the one I know. Yeah, you know they probably got again. This is this is the See, that's one of those thing. situations where I I just I get paid ahead of time, but you know hindsight's always twenty twenty. Well, here's the thing: I did this work over the summer, so why'd I get a check today? Also. Why are they even sending you the check if it's going to be fake? Like, what's, like... Right? I'm trying to think from their point of view, like, why would they even send you a fake check? And so, the the check came from UPS Next Day Air from J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, Urban Christ, Indiana, Grove City, Ohio. No, I'm sorry. Uh, and from Ohio. Urban Crest IND Drive. I don't know what the hell that means. Um, Grove City, Ohio. So it's from Ohio, but the company is out of California, Santa Rosa. One day, next fuck? day air. It's, I'm like, what the fuck, really? Yeah, that's that's weird. I, I don't know. I don't know. You want to talk about that? People yeah, are fucking. You don't have any contacts left, with them or anything? Like you don't have nope. any way to. I had a Skype with them, and uh, now it's you know ooh, it's conveniently gone. Or I mean, not now. I mean, back then it was. You know, I expected payment within like a week because that's they said like, well, we'll send you. We're sending you a check, and I said, well, this. That I don't know, that whole thing works. seems a little sketchy, like from the start. Again, I didn't go to school to learn how to not get fucking scammed. So sorry, I this happened to me. Um, but now I'm a little smarter about it because these guys like genuinely were like, oh, we're really excited to work with you, and blah blah blah. And I was like, sweet. And so, what, what kind of what what kind of videos were you editing? Like, what what were they for? They were for their website. It was yeah, just but like, like, what was their product? Like, what did they? They have. They had a gym. They had a gym where you lift weights. They owned a gym. Uh, they had a um, different building that had like one of those climbing walls. It's like a CrossFit esque sort of thing. And you don't know the name of this place? Nope. They gave me a name, but again, it's it, like you know, like you can't like you could you can't like Google can't, search it. I, I can't. I can't say yeah. Like I can say, oh, it was called. Uh, muscle and fitness, something, something, or whatever the fuck it yeah, was. Yeah, but they didn't give you like an address or any of that no. kind of stuff? No. They just wanted me to edit. I wasn't asking questions because I'm like, oh, fuck. Here's an opportunity to like not only do some work and get paid, but like maybe get my name out there. I wasn't thinking about any of that. And then for them to be like, well, this is, you know, we, the, agree, the agreed upon price, da da da. And they, that was their offer. They thought like, oh, this guy needs two grand to do this. I'm like, whoa, holy shit. I didn't want someone to say no. Um, and so, yeah. And, uh, I took it to the bank knowing that it was going to be a fraud check because uh, I had seen this happen once before and I handed it into the lady and she's like, yeah, this is a, this is fraudulent. And I'm like, all right, cool. And then she handed it back to me <laughs> and I'm like, I, I think it's illegal to possess this, but I'm just going to go home. <laughs> so I'm just trying to figure out why the fuck they would send you a fake check. Like, like if you're going to rip somebody off, why mail them something? Right. Exactly. Like, oh, I didn't hear from them for like a month. I guess they must have fucking ripped me off. But if, again, uh, you know, people would say, well, why don't you go after these people with, with legal power and shit? And it's like, well, it's that costs cost money more. that I don't yeah. fucking have. And I don't want to go into debt just to chase down a company that I don't know where they are. Like with, with Machinima, I know we know their address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can send a notice to their legal department. I could have got it, gotten out of my, uh, my contract a lot sooner if I had hired a lawyer to send a cease and desist something, whatever, letter to the legal department saying like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll sue your ass. Or something like that. Because then they usually go, yeah, whatever. This guy's savvy. He's got a lawyer. Let him go. It's like mm. More work than they're worth or something. But 
it was just an all around CrossFit sort of like you had panning shots, you had, you know, some people, there was already narration and stuff. They had sent me like all the audio tracks and everything. Like, can you stick, can you just do, make something out of this? I'm like, yeah, sure. And it was like four separate videos. Um, so it's whatever. Yeah, that it's sucks, just, but just loopholes. I don't know if that's a loophole situation. I'm pretty sure that's just illegal as fuck. Oh yeah. I don't think, yeah, you can't really that's do that. I don't think illegal. that's a loophole. I think they just broke the law and scammed the shit out of you. But and that sucks. Probably, they've probably done it before. So. So are you still you still looking around for a job? I'm assuming. Yes, I am. That's yeah. And the worst the worst part is uh, the three contacts or the references that I use, who are very credible references. I talk to them maybe once every week, maybe two weeks. And I'm like, hey, did you get a phone call from anybody? Like, no, none of them. None of them have gotten a phone call. All what fucking about that, summer, uh, the dishwashing place or whatever? I went there and they said um, it's the, it was kitchen help. And I said, okay, well, what's, what, what does that mean? And they said, well, we want, we're looking for somebody to hire uh, someone to prep the food for the, for, to be cooked, a cook, and a dishwasher. So they wanted to hire one person to do the job of three people at a restaurant. For minimum wage, seven fifty. Was this like a busy restaurant? Mm -hmm. It's not like a, it's not like a, it's a locally owned restaurant that people, local people go to. It's not like a, a fancy schmancy place or anything like that. Yeah, like is fancy. there like a lot of people like coming in and out of it though? Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Even when I was there, the people were coming in for breakfast, and they're like, ooh, ooh people coming in. You know, busy. Mm -hmm. It's a regularly steady, busy restaurant. So I'm, I'm assuming you, they just didn't didn't give it to you. Oh, of course not. I'm not dumb enough to take that amount of work for that amount of money. That's ridiculous. And it was only for like 16 hours a week. You would show up like on Saturdays and Fridays, and then I think it was they have a special that they do on like a Tuesday that they get, they get busy. But it's only for like fucking four or five hours at a time each day, each of those days. And I'm just like, this isn't a job. This isn't fucking a position. This is yeah. you got you fucking locally owned old white people who own their business who are trying to get somebody to work for them as cheaply as possible so they can make maximum profit when in reality yeah but if you need a job though like i don't know money's yeah, money money's money dude even on the amount of very little money that i live off of that job wouldn't have paid off my rent yeah but i mean i guess you could have you could have dealt with it until you found something else though maybe yeah i could have been kicked out of my apartment by the end of january but uh you know well, there's other what, shit going what around. What does that have to do with the job? The, that has everything to do with the job, not paying me enough to make my rent. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a shitty job, but you don't have a job right now, do you? No. Well, I mean, a shitty job is better than no job. You sound like my dad. Do you know one thing my dad is? A millionaire. That's well, like you don't have to be a millionaire to realize that a, sh a shitty job is better than no job. A shitty job better than no job. Zyback, I can be evicted from my apartment and still have a shitty job. Why would I spend the amount of time working at that shitty job knowing I'll get kicked out of my apartment because I can't make rent or spend my time wisely still looking for work? Oh, I'll get I'll make a hundred. Uh, I mean, I guess I'll make a hundred bucks in a month, but you know, whatever. Yeah, but you could I don't know. I feel like you still enough, if you're only working five, would you say 16 hours 16 a week? 16 fucking on the hours a week on the weekends. It was Friday, Saturday and Tuesday. That's still and I get it. Plenty of There's time still to look time. I get that. There's still time, but you know, it's just not something. It's not passable in my eyes. It's like I'm more mad at the position and the business owners and their idea of this being a job. It doesn't. No one. And I live in low income housing. Okay. If I if I rented a house down the block from where I live, that'd be like eight hundred dollars a month just to rent the house. And this is the kind of job they're offering people. That's insane. That's a job you offer to a kid who's just out of high school or wants to make some money. Like, with no experience whatsoever. So your dad's actually a millionaire? Or My dad's a fucking millionaire. He worked for the FAA all of his federal, adult career. Federal airline? The, the Federal Aviation Administration. Okay. He was, an, he was an air traffic controlman. He was in the Army, and then he became an air traffic controlman. And then he worked at a desk as I was as I was growing up, so I didn't know what the fuck he, the hell he did for a job. But in his latter years, the last five years uh, that he worked, in which 
the first year he could have retired. He chose not to because they have a package saying like, well, you could retire or if you keep working for us, we will pay you more each year until those, yep. those five years. So, so that's the incentive. So my dad was already making $400,000 a year. And he's one the of the time. people in the towers that coordinates the no, He did that. Yeah, he did that for a while and then and segued into an office job that I don't understand what it was because I was young and I didn't live with him. So I didn't know what the fuck was going on um, or what he did for work. And then when I was living with him for a few years, uh, when I was um, doing my final year of high school, the reason I was moved down to live with my dad, the, the whole reason was he had said, we know that your family in Minnesota can't afford to send you to college, but I really want to see you go to college. And I'm like, well, sweet. So I move, uh, I moved down to New Mexico to live with him for my senior year. I go back home to Minnesota to, to see my friends graduate from high school. I come uh -huh. back and he's already divorced his, his wife who, or my stepmom, whom I've known for a long time. Um, and go and he says to me, "Sorry, can't can't help you go to college. Uh, I, I, I the divorce is going to cost me so much money. Granted, now four hundred thousand about four hundred thousand dollars a year for whatever twenty five years I think was how much he was making. The last five years went from every year it went up. It went up to six hundred and ten thousand a year in the last year he that he could work within that, that package, the, and then he retired. Made that much? I mean, I know they made a. a I, but, I know it's again, like a skill, but he's not an air traffic controlman when he's making this much money. He's something else that I don't know what he does. He works at the FAA. He works near the airport. He, whatever the fuck it is, he mm. did. Now, when I lived with him for the for the I think three years that I was there. He uh, was doing the job was basically there's this big computer and what it does is it handles all the air traffic in the tri-state area. So like New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, Utah, okay. and there are there is there is a big computer. Um, these computers exist throughout the country in certain places so that all air traffic can be monitored. So if a plane needs to talk to a plane across from these different states and stuff. So his job was to sit in that room with another guy. If the computer had an error, it would actually print out an error page, shut down, and then him and this other guy's job was to run a diagnostic on it while they would, re they would boot up the backup computer, fix the first computer that broke or that had a bug, boot that one back up, and shut off the backup computer. That sounds Which, like a pretty important job, though. It is very important. Very important job, and he had to study a lot to get that job. Yeah, he's got to keep the fucking machine running. He's like... right. The one-man mechanic or two-man right. mechanic. My dad, though, very much, uh, p very, very frugal. Doesn't go out to eat. Doesn't go to movies. Drives That's, an yep. 84 Park Avenue that he drove into the ground. Um, That's how you do it. Spent very little money. Very little money. And his attitude was, well, I mean, a shitty job is better than no job. Well, yeah, all right. Get the fuck out of here. Last time I talked to my dad, I said, Dad, I need a little bit of help. Do you think you can help me out? And he said, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. A month later, I got a book he wrote in the mail. A book. That's a little douchey. He sent me, <laughs> sent me a book. It's not a book of advice or anything either. It's an actual published thing. He published a book with a bunch of his older retired friends. And um, it's all his section is stories that I already know. Stories about his past, except he's changed the names of everybody. Uh -huh. And I'm like, the fuck is this? You know, <laughs> that's it. So uh, my dad's a very much a, a, a huge asshole. But his, his mentality was like, sorry, I couldn't send you to college. You should go to school full time and work full time. And I just looked at him and I was like, that is insane. Yeah. There yeah, are people who can do that. Do trust that me. Anymore. But at the time, this was 2008. And he's like, yeah, whatever. And he studied, he studied economy in, in college in Jersey whatever school in Jersey, he showed me a giant fucking grid that he had made. And it's like, a, you know, it's, it's the stock market, basically. He's like, and in 2000, I think it was 2007 or something like that. He's like, this is what's going to happen. I want to show you that he was excited about it. I didn't give a fuck. And he's like, watch this. The graph goes all the way up and then boom, it crashes like around 2008. So, you know, save yep. your money. And I'm like, dad, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a job. I was like, I was, how old was I? I was like 19 did, at the time. I'm assuming he, he bought in in 2007, right? It sounds like he... I'm sh he I don't do. know what he did. I'm, I don't know what he did, but he wasn't that affected by it. And he, he did, he's, not, he's not into like uh, yeah, housing I, market or any of that shit, but... 
I'm what he, sure he, what he probably did was he's talking about how you want to save your money. He was probably talking about how he was going to go in and buy stuff up when it was cheap and then hang on to it. Mm-hmm. The only reason I'm into this is because literally this week I uh, I am now in the stock market. Um, I've been investing my shit, trying to get my money to uh, work for me. Nothing, nothing too crazy. It's um, I'm invested in an S and P 500 index fund, which is essentially like you kind of just put your money in there, and it's uh, you essentially just it's better better than making interest from the bank. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not like I'm some Wolf of Wall Street guy that's like buying and selling. I, essentially, I just put it in there and make dividends off of it, and then the dividends uh, dividends I make. I reinvest it, so I'm, I'm making so compounding make interest. Dividends. Yep. Yeah, so essentially, uh, it's a get rich slow technique. That's what. Yeah. That's the way yeah. that it's always been pitched. It's not you're, you're not going to make a lot of money overnight or even over five years, but over twenty years with the compounding interest over and over and exponential growth, and that and it keeps up with inflation a lot more. Right. So yeah, um, as somebody who lives very poor. Uh, someone in my stream was like uh they were like well because you live so poor what would you do if somebody just gave you like a million dollars and i answered the question and they were shocked that my answer was i would take it and put it away somewhere to where it can make its own money and i wouldn't really spend any of it or m- not much of it on myself i'd probably i answered the question i said like i'd probably get a new computer and like new computer stuff new keyboard mouse speakers another monitor so that I can do more streaming related stuff, F- maybe fix my car, but the rest of it I wouldn't touch because I've, I've lived on so little for so long that having money actually freaks me out. Yeah. Like when I had that money, I was like, when I had the, my BlizzCon money to pay for the hotel and for, uh, what the fuck else did I need that for? For backup and like emergency money. I was like shocked because at that point, I'm 31 years old and I had never held a thousand dollars before. In in one hundreds physical, and so I'm like, all right. Yeah, so I mean, a thousand dollars is kind of a lot to be like, he- just like to have with you. Like, mm-hmm. I don't. Well, no, the most money I've ever actually held in my hand was like two hundred and fifty grand, but it wasn't really my money. It was I was making a trip to the bank. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, so yeah. I, I had it for like in my hand for like three five minutes, and then yeah, you were responsible for it. I was responsible for it. And yeah, my dad was like, "Yeah, I need you to go to the bank." And I, I just was curious, and I opened up the fucking giant blue pouch, and I looked at the number, and I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it you know what I'm like talking about? Those, like those big you. blue zipper? No, like, no, yeah, I know, I know. Bag things, and I'm like, "Why are you getting me to do this? Are you just like intentionally trying to make me feel like uncomfortable as fuck?" <laughs> I'm sure a lot of it was checks, because I'm sure the 250 grand in, in bills would weigh a lot more, but yeah, there definitely yeah. was a fucking stack. It's almost like it's the smartest. It's the smartest business decision your dad can make when it comes to like sending somebody to go to the bank with a lot of money. Whereas most companies would have to hire like a security, like uh, someone who offers that as security thing. Like you see them outside of big banks. Yeah, and uh, armored car companies. Armored truck or car van or whatever. It's like Those, um, no one's going to. I don't think no it was two hundred fifty grand. It was. Oh, it was probably less than that. It, uh, maybe I'm overhyping it, but it was just, a lot. It was definitely yeah. like over fifty. Probably like one hundred fifty though. Save money to give the bag to Zybeck. No one will ever think a kid has a hundred over a hundred grand in his car. A lot, just... it, it probably wasn't that much cash though, <laughs> oh, just no, because I, we're in the car business and a lot of people like the cash that that we did get was probably from service, like from people getting oil changes and uh, all that stuff. Whereas when people buy cars, they use checks or they use bank yep. transfers and stuff like that. So. Yeah, Most of it was probably it. credit cards and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm we sure that there was definitely a fucking pile of cash in that thing too, though. Yeah. And then growing up in the age of, like, by the time I was old enough to manage my own finances, like, carrying cash was, like, a thing that was starting to become... Or ca- not carrying cash was starting to become a thing that was popular. Yeah, I don't carry Everything's cash. Everything's on the card. And I've n- I never carry cash. But, you know. Yeah, you're kind of silly, in my opinion, to do it. The, and the only time I carry cash is if I'm on a date, just because I'm always paranoid that my card's going to get declined, and I don't want to mm. be that fucking guy, so I always carry cash then. But other than that, no. Yeah. Um, but to, to bring it back around to financials, like, I haven't... I, I can't think of any, like, big financial mistake that I've made 
just because I started off with my, like, I've owned my own business, like, so young that, uh, I guess I've always been scared to spend a lot of my money. But the only, the only real financial mistake that I made was not investing in any of my money for as long as I did. I kind of just held on to it in the bank, which sounds like it's a good idea. But in reality, money in the bank is just appreciating because it doesn't keep up with inflation. Yeah. Uh, and I should have put it in an S&P 500 index fund, or maybe not specifically that. It's but also a shitty it, WWE pay-per-view, too. So. What? Money in the bank. Oh. But anyway, um, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I, I love that there. it flies over your head. That just yeah. makes you laugh. Um, anyway. Uh, S&P, invest it. Do it. Yeah, I, I, and, and this is not, I mean, obviously no investment is safe, but an index fund, essentially you're investing in the top 500 companies in the United States, like, and it's sort of spreading it all out within 500 different companies. So, I mean, if there is a somewhat safe bet, that's definitely it for the long term anyway. Um, but the thing is, uh, you know, as your dad was, you know, your dad lives frugally. The thing is, is... That if you invest three thousand dollars in the stock market, for example, and you saved up three grand that you wouldn't have saved up if you weren't being so frugal, that three grand is going to be worth a lot more than three grand twenty years down the line. So the three grand you saved could be worth, you know, thirty grand in twenty years. And that's just from saving just that one. And just just from saving that initial grand. three yeah. grand. It's like having a little money. Because freeze. the interest because and if you invested it in one of these sort of conservative funds, um, the the dividends that three grands make the dividends that three grand would make would contribute to that three grand. So that three grand you put in now becomes three thousand one hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And then that three thousand one hundred dollars becomes three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. And that three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars becomes three thousand seven hundred whatever. And then the compounding interest of to where that you know that initial amount of money has grown and now it's making even more money because it's growing more and it's that that money that it makes is causing it to grow even more and more and it's exponential so yeah i think banks offer something called a cd yeah but they're shit yeah they're, they're, they're dog shit. shit they're like you can't touch your money for five years you yeah, sign something that says like horse even shit. if you need them it. if you need the money and like you're it's like an emergency they're, they're like no you can't, huge you can't penalties. have it. yeah it's uh, yeah they're shit um i thought about it just because a cd is safer uh, because it's insured, I believe it's insured. Whereas, FDIC. The stock market, yeah, FDIC insured. Um, I think it is. Whereas the stock market, you know, it could fucking tank. But if you're patient and you hang on to it, outside of some apocalyptic event, I don't think the top 500 companies in the U.S. are going anywhere anymore soon. Mm. Uh, especially if especially, they don't have to pay any fucking taxes. God yeah. damn it! Especially with like a majority of those companies now being like internet based you know they're like businesses that are online i'm yeah. not a majority but there's there's they're creeping in on that top 500 though some of these companies are now where it's like i run this as my business and it's online and it, it's this and it's like okay cool i just can't believe apple is still top dog i got there's, there's fucking phones man that's and their computer well, well no my friend showed me and i think i talked about this on the podcast the the new imax they look like uh, jet turbines. Have I brought this up before? No. Oh, um, they they look, they look. Let me find a picture of them. But they look so awesome, and they're like fifteen thousand dollars. The new. IMI. Of course they are. What do they well, have? They my have friend Ken is like a fucking. <laughs> they have four gigs of RAM. Typical fucking Apple product. They look like jet turbines. They have four gigs of RAM and a well, they used 2. to look eight gigahertz processor. They used to look a certain way for a long time, and then uh, Steve Jobs died, and whoever's taking it over now is like. Well, because they're going to look fucking awesome. Their uh, shit does always look good aesthetically, but it's just that that's about all it does. Um, but I, I would, I'm curious to see where they make all their money, where Apple makes all their money. It's got to be the phones. Like, it, I don't the think they got The phones and situa- the apps, I think they get a cut on the apps. The, yeah, it's got to be something like that. It can't just be the phones. Because, like, with Microsoft, for example, they make a lot of their money just by licensing stuff. Like, it's not just Windows from consumers, but they license it to businesses, and that's where they make most of their money. Like, a lot of people would assume that Microsoft makes all their money off of just people like me and you, but apparently they do stuff with businesses, and I'm not too privy on it. But, essentially, they're the way they make their money is a lot more diverse than you would think. And I feel like Apple's got to be in some sort of situation like that. It can't just be the iPhones. I mean, I'm sure they're making a 
fucking dump truck load of money on the <laughs> iPhones, but they've got they got to have something else up their sleeve to just be that top dog for so long. Yeah, I mean, when you're good at business, you tend to continue to thrive. I'm, I'm linking you, just you a linked couple. Me a fucking random computer. Uh, no, no. See that that black. Oh, that's the computer? Thing. I thought that was like a fucking, one of those things you put a soda can in that keeps it cool. I didn't realize that was the computer. <laughs> no, no, that's their computer. Um, I'm linking up series of images. Yeah. Um, the computer is, uh, the core on the inside is all the parts. The last image kind of shows you like what the tech kind of looks like. And it's a little weird to sort of take a look at it. But the from the way it's been explained to me by my Mac nerd friend is that uh, cold air is pushed from the bottom up and out of the machine and keeps all the parts cool. Yeah. And you can remove the cylinder from the inside and you pull it out and you see all the components, the motherboards and all that stuff. But it see, looks like cool, a trash can. But, you know, I mean, I guess that's cool from a mobility perspective because you can just like pick up your computer and take it with you. And I know Mac did something similar before with the Mac Mini mm-hmm. um, where there was like this little tiny cube, I think, right? I think if it I'm was remembering cube, yeah. correctly, um, but it was a little tiny little desktop. But there is such a huge advantage to just having a typical boring ass PC case. Because when you have something that small and that compact, how's it going to cool itself efficiently? That was the problem I had with IMAX when I used to. I took a video editing class in high school, which was fucking worthless, by the way. Um, mm. But they were all on IMAX. Everything was on IMAX. And, dude, you'd, you'd render a video, and the, the thing would fucking bake. Like, the computer yeah. would just be <laughs> yeah. unusable. Uh, like, literally if, you, literally, if you were rendering a video, you cannot use the computer at all for anything. Uh, and I know that, you know, with Sony Vegas, that's kind of the same way. Like, I'm sure when you render videos and you're browsing around the internet occasionally, the sound will get a little weird or something like that. My, um, my fucking fans all go off. Yeah. Like, I'll just go extra fucking hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in there, you can tell there's definitely some performance gain. But, I mean, th- this shit, you literally could not open up Safari or anything if it was mm. rendering a video. And, and it's because the computers were the screens. Like, all of the internal computer components were inside of the iMac screen. And you look on the back of the, the screen in the iMac, and there's no ventilation. It's just like, oh, I guess these things just have to, like, throttle themselves constantly because they can't be cooled down. And the videos would take so fucking long to render. To I, I just, under- like, got a laptop and rendered them fast because the, the laptop would actually, like, even though, despite them being less powerful, they would actually, like, run. I don't understand cool how this works, but my friend says that the Mac proprietary components... On you know the motherboards, everything like that, uh-huh. they're all they're all built to work more efficiently than buying third party components and putting them in a PC. That's why they cost so much. Bullshit. But then I, in my brain, I just said to myself, "This is his reason why he likes Mac." <laughs> like he can't actually tell me a real factual thing as to why Mac is good. This sounds like pseudoscience. Like, oh yeah, they're all made. The parts are all made to fit together more efficiently. Then what the fuck are you talking? About? But again, people spend thousands of dollars on these computers, and that's another thing I hate. Not the fact that they're so expensive, but like, if um, if you want to work on somebody, like if you get hired to work and create and uh, edit a video, and you have to physically be a part of the process, right? Yep. There, ev- everybody, everybody has this idea that you have to have the uh, Adobe Suite, and it has to be on a Mac. It's like, dude, oh. people can produce movies on fucking PCs. It's, it's not that big dude, of a deal. So I can show make for most the job. of my videos on Windows Movie Maker. Most yeah. of them. But I mean, like, if you wanted to make, like, really professional quality stuff, like, there's a place in town called, I don't know, whatever. It's a fucking music store. And they uh, run a dance studio for girls. They do dancing and they go on competitions and shit. And there was a job opening for somebody to be the editor and, and do some, a bit of camera work and stuff. And I'm like, all right, cool. I can do I can do that job. But the guy, I called him up. He's like, well, you have to be good with Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, and all this Adobe shit. And I'm like, I you know, <laughs> haven't touched. Can, a, I haven't touched the same Mac. thing, but in just different programs. I can do it in my apartment. Oh no, you have to do it with our computers. And I'm like, no, I don't. Then they don't understand this shit. So like, most people use PC, and then you sit down in front of a Mac, and your brain turns into jelly because you don't know what the hell's going on but no it has yeah. to be done i hate that the professional world of video editing is like that and i fucking hate it because you get indoctrinated I don't know if that's in always, school yeah 
Mm. School tells you you got to use a Mac. You got to use these programs because this is how the business works. And it's like, so it's like whatever. Yeah, that, that whole indoctrinating people in school thing is is crazy. Like that's how uh, Apple got got popular at first. They 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 were really smart about that back in when they were first you know starting up. They gave all these schools Apple mm-hmm. computers for free, and the schools were like, "Oh my God, you guys are amazing! Thank you so much!" Because they didn't have to pay for them. But in reality, they were just securing future com- it's condition. It's yeah. condition securing fucking. future customers by yeah. having everybody know how to use Macs, and that's all they know how to use. So it forces the businesses to buy Macs, and uh, you know, smart. You know, they, they were the first people. I, I know Microsoft does it too, but I think Apple was the first, were the first no, people to they were, really do it to like to do it like from the start. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. That's smart. Went, that's smart as I fuck. From um, when I went from junior high school, or I'm sorry, when I went from middle school to junior high. I had an option to either go to one school that didn't have Mac computers donated to them and the, and a new school called Mississippi Horizons, which had every fucking classroom. had a, I had an iMac, you know, those circular ones with the handle on the top. And yeah, they're like multicolored or whatever. They're really weird looking, yeah. And, um, and then the library was like a bunch of Macs. Like they didn't even have a computer lab. They now have a computer lab. And you had to test into whether or not you were going to be sent to. Basically, the school that I live in right now was mm-hmm. the school that has no Macs in it. I tested, the school you live in now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the, 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 my apartment complex is an <laughs> I just, old night. I forgot is an that old your high apartment school. is like an old. Uh, my, room, my room is the old choir room, according to women who have visited me on, you know, when I bring them home. They're like, this is the choir room. And then, like, my windows have, like, granite on the bottom Dude, of them. That's fucking awkward. They're, they're, they're well, like, oh, I remember this. This is where the fucking choir thing used to be i had a i had a girl in here once and she's like let me let me find it and she was moving some shit on my the the shelf she, she of like my windows the fucking well no no the granite on uh, below on the windowsill uh is like all, got all kinds of shit etched into it from the 90s like jonathan taylor thomas and like all this other shit and she found the one that she did it was like one of her and her friend and her boyfriend she like etched it in there and she's like see that's mine i'm like oh okay but huh. I think that's a that's an advantage for me because I didn't didn't go to school here, so this place doesn't creep me out. Um, yeah, your your apartment is like fucking huge. Like you you could like bowl in there. Yeah. Uh, it sucks. I can't make any modifications to it though. Like I can't add anything to the building or to my room because it no, low income tax bracket building that sort of thing. Um, which, by the way, if this if. If I keep seeing people owning sports cars parking in my parking lot, I'm going to start fucking breaking windows because these motherfuckers can't live here. Mm, they, I wouldn't they, do they, that, but... They can't live here. There's a fucking income amount. It's like if you make over $28,000 or you own assets in, in exceeding $28,000, you're not allowed to live here. This building is a, is a place f- to create opportunities for artists, not for your fucking retarded ass who owns a car that costs sixty grand. fucking living here. It's so stupid. I mean, I'm obviously not going to do that. But yeah, I'm just... I've actually got a, a fucking apartment gaming setup tour video coming out. It was supposed to be today, but holy shit, have you... I don't know if you've ever uploaded a 4K video to YouTube, but they take so long to process. Mm-hmm. Like, the thing is still processing now, and I uploaded it, like, seven hours ago, and it's really? still 360p. The thing is, like... And it's not that big of a file size. I don't know. Some about 4K to YouTube, it just takes forever for it to do it. But okay, it feels like it's still a little new as far as resolution to be. Yeah, but I got all these, all those posters I was talking about earlier came in, and I got like I ordered these uh, 1500 thread count sheets, like bed sheets, and these like badass pillows. You were talking about the pillows. Yeah, dude, these pillows are. I ordered this one pillow and I bought three more of them because it's like the shit. It's shredded memory. It's the fucking bomb. Um. Very happy with my purchases. The pillow, the pillow review video coming soon, Zybeck. Dude, it might happen. YouTube.com. My, my, my new bed bedroom. setup is like absolutely off the fucking hook. Like I slept so good last night with all my new so shit. So we can transition with you being the one of, one out of the two of us who obviously can afford like yet very comfortable. I get it, but overpriced pillows and bed sheets. Do you think the price for the Oculus Rift? is a fair price uh do i think it's a fair price um yeah you think it's worth the amount that they, they're charging for it i i don't i don't think it's worth a hundred dollars but i'm just not i'm not i'm not the fucking right guy to ask <laughs> i think that shit's just dumb i i'm not on the vr kool-aid at all right. i just i think it's too clunky 
I don't think it's realistic. I think it's something that people think will be cool for a while and they'll, they'll buy it and they'll mess around with it for a few hours and then just realize that it's not really that practical and nobody wants to wear a fucking helmet on their head when they just want to relax and play video games. It's just not just, a relaxing thing yet to this do. This is what I see happening with this. It's going to be the next thing the media talks about being the thing that's like ruining our children. Um, and I also think that people are going to simply use them to watch TV while they lie down. Because I don't see, I can I only have one working functional eye, so the, the Oculus Rift would not do anything for me. But that's like my excuse. Like that's my legit reason why I still wouldn't pay six hundred dollars for a fucking Oculus Rift. I wouldn't. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not a fan of the Oculus Rift at all. Uh, but to talk about the bed sheets. So yes, the bed sheets are. Well, I actually got them pretty cheap. Uh, they're still expensive for sheets, but. You know, my my reasoning is, you know, how much time you spend sleeping. I think I knew it. You were just gonna boil this down to like it's it's an investment. It is an investment. Yeah, yeah. No, plus when I bring mad bitches over here, they're gonna be like, "Dude, your bed is so nice." Yeah, because I've got the fucking fifteen hundred thread count sheets and these pillows from like heaven. And and I completely agree with you. But then when I'm forever aloneing, jerking off my bed, it's gonna be more comfortable for me too. So, (laughs) yeah. No, I get you. It's an investment. uh, when I was in California at the Annabella Hotel, um, the bed the bed was just fucking amazing, and the pillows were like God. Yeah, it was great. And so yeah, as soon hotels, as I came, they, they put they use those high quality shit. They better that well. fucking Annabella is not cheap. It's like right across the street from Disneyland. So I'm yeah. just like whatever, but still. Um, and as soon as I got home, I got some good pillows. Like not 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 like yours, but I mean like I went to Walmart. I picked up. I picked up new. I don't want to brag, but I went to Walmart. Walmart. I dropped. I dropped. I dropped a cool twenty dollars on a couple of pillows. I just like the way you said that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I bought some. I bought some nice pillows. You know, I went to Walmart. (laughs) Basically, my 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 story of pillow upgrade is my old pillows were were getting flat because they were old. Yeah, and I bought new pillows that are now fluffy. So with like, your, yeah, with cool. your old pillows, are they yellow as fuck? Mm-mm, no, I cleaned them. Oh, you mean the pillow pillow? The pillow pillow. Uh, yes. From, Dude, from you can't sweating. avoid it. You can't avoid it. It's just like no matter how much you wash those motherfuckers, they just get yellow. Yeah, all, every a, fr- time. a friend of mine, a friend of mine, told me she's like, that's from you being sick and no, it's not. taking taking Nyquil, right? No, 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 because. When you break a fever in your sleep, you start to sweat. It seeps into the pillow. That's why it turns yellow like that. It's yeah. it's it's body. It's liquid. Yeah, being but you get that even if you like you, the oil from your skin is just gonna come off. Right. And seep into that shit anyway. It goes through the pillowcase, which you can clean. But the pillow is like, no, I want to keep this, and that's why they're all like that. And that, yeah. mine were pretty bad because I had had them for many years. So. Yeah, one of, the one pillow I, I replaced this is just awful. It's like. Stop! Stop! Light yellow. It's fucking yellow <laughs> as shit. Uh, <laughs> and it's good that you get new pillows and stuff and and whatnot because you're you get so acclimated and conditioned to sleeping on your old shitty pillows that it's actually it actually starts to be bad for your posture, your neck, and stuff like that. So when I was in California and I was sleeping bomb. on those pillows, I was like, "This is like an experience of itself." I was like, "This is great." I've been sleeping on shit pillows in a crappy bed most of my life, and this feels awesome. Yeah, the pillows I got. Um, they used to be a lot more expensive. Um, they used to be like two hundred dollars a pop, and I wouldn't have paid that shit for them. But they're, they're like fifty three dollars for the king size pillows, and I bought king size pillows even though I have a queen size bed because I'm a, I'm a big fan of these fucking pillows. Mm. They're they're awesome. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, that video will be coming out maybe before this podcast or after it. I don't know if the motherfucking thing's gonna process though. It's just taking so long. Um, you want to switch switch topics? Mm-hmm. Uh, let me look through my... Oh, so Star Wars is the <laughs> official number one movie ever now. Oh, it broke the Titanic yep. record or, or yep. the, the, Titanic the Avatar, Avatar record? Yeah, both of them. Yeah, that's right. I think it's deserving. It's a it good is, movie. It is a good fucking movie. And the only thing wrong with Star Wars is friends of mine who still haven't seen the fucking movie. Like, I was... I, I, I met I up with my I wonder how long it's going to be in theaters. Like, I wonder if they're just going to let this thing ride out for, like, three months. Because it's, it's gotta be still, it's got it's one of those movies that's gonna just continually make money. Yeah, like I, I feel like that it's just it's such a big a, such a big draw that 
they don't have to like limit the theater release. What it is is that people want to have that experience of seeing it in the theaters yeah. because when they know it's not in theaters anymore, they're never you're never going to see it in theaters again until yep. like one day when they have a marathon. And this is it. one that I think both of us agree that you want to see in theaters. Like mm-hmm. it's not going to yeah. be the same on and my DVD. Friend, my, I was my friend said just that exactly. He's like, "I'll get, I'll just, I'll, I'm, I'll wait till it comes out on DVD." And I'm like, "What? No, you fucking see this movie." Yeah, no, you want to see this one with the the crazy 3D IMAX in the big screen with the crazy stereos and all that stuff. It's it's worth it. Now, That's most movies I, w- I would disagree. Most movies I think are shittier in the theaters than if you were just at home in your comfort zone, just watching it at your own leisure and being able to pause and take a piss, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this one, no, definitely go see it in theaters. Like this, the Revenant movie. I don't know what the hell it's about, but I'm, I'm yeah, I have no Leonardo reason to DiCaprio, go see it. Caprio, yeah, yeah. I don't know anything about it. it. The trailers didn't inform me or anything. I could care less. And if I if someone says it's a good movie and I, I pick it up for five bucks at Walmart, one day, great. You know. Also, I think this movie is secretly giving Guild Wars two attention because uh, the new re- the new class in Guild Wars two is called the Revenant. So oh. I think they're thinking like, oh, the this SEO is the dog. Guild Wars two movie. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I did want to talk about. Um, or was there more about Star Wars that you wanted? No, that, that was it. I I just saw that today. Oh, okay, cool. Um, I did want to talk about this, even though it, it it's, it's, you'll like you'll you'll like what I'm talking. It's not wrestling. It's um, well, fucking. <laughs> I finally got to see like the end game content in Heart of Thorns, which is like the not the raids, but the fact that we're, we're trying to fight a dragon. It's like a jungle dragon. The green one, yeah. Yeah. And you you go farther south to like this. Apparently the zone wasn't in the game at launch. And I, came, I think it came out like two weeks ago or something. But it's a whole zone where you have to fight through the zone in different lanes and kill stuff. And excuse me. And once all three lanes get to a certain point where they can break into like where the head of the dragon is. Or what they call it, the mouth of Mordremoth is the name of the thing you fight. You get to this area where there's like floating islands that are being, they're floating because of like ley line magic and shit, which this dragon is like consuming. And you jump onto these, you float, you can glide onto these platforms and fight it. And it is a giant, imagine like a Chinese dragon, like the long ones. Okay. That have, a, have like a head and they have like the whiskers. That's kind of what he looks like. Um, but he also looks like he's made of wood. My whole point is this, that whole encounter from start to finish is great. It's just really great. Like you're, you're farming these mobs and shit to like push forward into, um, dragon's stand, I think is the name of the map. You're defeating the Mordrum as you move forward and then you get to where Mordremoth's mouth is and you fight him and that whole, the grinding to get to him, not a problem. Because it's all event and story driven and everything like that. But when you see this thing in this like environment where you fight this monster, it's really fucking good. It's just done well. And I, so it's like one of the first things I've seen in Guild Wars 2 that's executed in a way that they, they knew they wanted it to look really cinematic and really epic. And they didn't fuck it up. But it's probably one of those things that's only cool like a few times though, right? No, no. I mean, like, ah, eventually you'll get tired of it, but it's always, you can always look at it and be appreciative of, like, this is done very well. As opposed to, I don't know if you ever finished your personal story when you played Guild Wars 2 where you fight Zaitan at the end. Uh, is that the, the un- purple dragon? No, that was the undead dragon. Oh, that was in that dungeon, right? He's not in a dungeon. He's in your story. The green icon that you constantly follow. It's like, oh, now I got to do this. And now mm, I, I can't this. remember. It's been a while. Well, towards the end of your personal story, you end up on Or where uh, Zaitan is. And it is the, it's a boring fight. You're on like a flying ship and you're shooting uh, giant cannons at Zaitan who is hanging on to. I don't remember what, but he's hanging on to like a mountain. And it's you just shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. And then he jumps off the fucking mountain, flies around, does some stupid shit. And then he lands back on that same spot, and you shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, and it's a fucking boring ass. It, that, this is not something that you repeat, by the way. This is something that you just do once in your in your personal story, and that's it. You don't fight Zaitan anywhere else, I don't believe. 
outside of your personal story. It's boring and it sucks. Whereas th- th- that example of fighting Zaitan, they said this is going to be epic and the way it's executed is fucking lame. Mm. Now you fight Mordramoth, you can fight him as many times as you want as long as you show up to the event, get organized with everyone who's there, and you go and you fight him. So this isn't like a one-time thing. It's executed fucking great. He's very imposing. He's just like this long neck dragon. He comes out of the ground. So you never see his. He doesn't have like a tail. But if you are on one of the platforms, you get like a warning, right? If, you, if you're on a platform that says like, oh, it looks like Mordramoth is about to uh, attack that platform because he bites it to try and like rip out um, uh, magical ley line energy from it so you can get stronger or whatever. It's basically if you let it, if he consumes too much ley line energy, uh, the, ma- the event ends, everyone dies. So... But when this, if you get this warning and you're on the platform and it's like, Zaitan's about to do that. Or not Zaitan, sorry, Mordramoth. You see Mordramoth show up and he talks too, by the way. He's like, oh, fucking, he's got a great voice. It's scary as shit. And you see, like his face just comes right up to the side of those platforms. And you're just like, holy fuck. This yeah. is a, this is a fucking awesome experience. They just like, were able to translate the scale well. I'm yeah. Assuming. Yeah. He's big, but he's not like over big. You know what I mean? But it's great. And again, my complaints are always like, well, there's no like treasure. There's no like treasure hunting. There's no like, oh, kill him. And then you get something special for fighting him. That's not in the game, but they do have a whole set of armor that you can RNG get. Um, You're guaranteed to get a piece every time you defeat him. uh, That has like this aura about it. It has like this Mordrum moth, like in game, like there's, there's this aura on these Mordrum things where it's like a, it's, it kind of yeah. looks like they're stinky. You know what an aura is. Yeah, thing. it's like a I'm trying to glowing effect. Yeah, it's kind of like it goes from, from, from your shoulders and it goes up and it's like black and green and shit. And you can get all the suit and it, it, the more pieces of the suit you get, the more of an aura you have. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. Even though it's not like a yeah, thing see, where you're guaranteed. See, my issue with Go Wars 2 is like that kind of stuff is cool. And they, I did, they did do some cool shit like that, like with the world events and stuff. But it's just like that you do that and then you get bored of that pretty quickly. And then there's just nothing else for forever. Yeah. And it was just, well, once it started to become about like living story being the, the faux end game, that's, that's the part we all hated. But like the dungeons in the game, you hadn't run the dungeons before, you want to get that piece of gear, or you want to get like a set of gear with like certain stats so you can run a certain build a certain way. That's the exciting part of Guild Wars too. And I got to be honest, in Heart of Thorns, they brought that back, but it's in the entire expansion. Like you go from... I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, you go from zone to zone to zone, and there's a meta for the whole zone, and you get rewarded for it. It's fun. It's fucking... It's not great. I, clearly, there's a lot of shit that I would add to it that, in my opinion, would make hardcore people come back to the game and enjoy it. But it's well done. The only thing, and I'll say this, fuck all you people who are like, oh, I'm not buying it until it goes down in price. They made the base game for uh, free, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, they made that. Oh, don't you though, still have to buy it though? Like you buy for, the you buy the expansion. Yeah, I know. There's like I know it's like really limited for gold selling purposes, from what I heard. Like you can't play Guild Wars two, like the original one, for free, really, until you actually buy the expansion. I heard there's a lot of limitations. Yeah, I didn't hear anything like that. I didn't hear that if you didn't have the expansion, you had like a. Limit yeah, I heard that there's like chat and trade limits because they they would probably have a a big problem with gold sellers if they just let everybody just have that's another thing too you can buy the expansion with gems which you can get gems through having gold Yeah, that's pretty cool you can get the fucking expansion but don't sit here and go i'm not gonna get it because it's too much money it's 50 bucks for a lot of content like i did not digest this entire expansion in like a week like i thought i would that's why i stack up to the base game like is it is it essentially a whole new base game yeah like well the base game has like, like tons of zones and like there's, yeah yeah, there's, yeah but like how, how much content does it stack up to the original guild wars 2 um i would say equally the same if you are so oh wow so it's like it's like they literally doubled the content in the game specifically the fact that when you level up a character in guild wars 2 from 1 to 80 you start off in your city and you go through these different zones and you may not ever hit the other zones, right? That like a Norn would hit or an Asura would hit to go leveling. Yeah. And then you could, but then all of the leveling zones kind of converge 
on or every if I'm just um every race kind of converges into one spot on the map where they're leveling from the 50s to the 80s. Yeah, all I of that, that. Yeah. plus the du- the only thing that this expansion doesn't have is new dungeons, but it does have raids and I've only seen the entrance to one raid so far. But if they are have the raids like tightly tuned, like are the bosses hard and stuff? I haven't done any of them yet. Well, that, my one you're around it though. I mean, surely I hear I hear people say like they're they're fun and doable unlike the dungeons where like for Ascalon Catacombs for example there are literally parts of that dungeon where you just fucking run and not fight any of the skelks that are in there whereas if you play World of Warcraft you go to a dungeon you're like okay we gotta kill everything but in this game it's like I gotta run past them how would I know where to run past them at you know so yeah, I, remember like, when I, I remember when I was playing Guild Wars 2 we we I made a video that showed how to farm that one fire dungeon the most efficiently we had like five minute runs or something crazy like that, and that's how you yeah. got all the best gear in the game. And we like had that shit down to a science. Oh yeah, it was basically like how to get all your berserker gear so fast because you made so much money. Yeah, and it was like whatever. I mean, the from what people say, the raids are they feel more like actual raids, like a traditional raid, where because now there's direct healing and taunting in the game now. So yeah, they did a complete about face on that whole no trinity shit, eh? It, and no expansion. And, uh, yeah, it's like, we're not going to make you pay for an expansion. That's fucking, bleh, bleh, that's gating you from the content. Whereas in Heart of Florence, yeah, you're level 80, but now you have masteries that you can learn. So, like, one of them is the gliding. They give you a glider early on, and they're like, cool, now you have a glider. Now, if you keep training on how to use the glider, there's, like, different tiers of, like, uh, benefits. So, like, the first benefit, I believe, is you can lean forward and you'll actually go forward faster, but it'll reduce the endurance bar for how long you can be gliding. Um, And, for example, the one that I'm working on right now is I don't use any endurance while gliding if I don't do any leaning, so I can just glide forever. And that you can get to updrafts that send you upward. Yeah, that kind of stuff is cool. That's fucking great. I love that. You know, the one game... You ever heard of 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 Firefall? Yeah. That game had the coolest gliding I've ever seen in a game. Uh, unfortunately, the rest of the game was dog shit. But uh, <laughs> the gliding part was awesome. So you'd essentially, like, step on these platforms, and it would shoot you up like Banjo-Kazooie. Like those, like, you ever played Banjo-Kazooie where you, you jump on the flight pad, and it just shoots you straight up like a rocket, and then you start uh-huh. flying? Yeah. It would do that, but the physics in the game were just really cool. And uh, I'm sure you're familiar with how your character has, like, these jets around him. In Firefall? Like, yeah, in Firefall, where you, no, no, your, your character is like it. a giant robot guy with like jetpacks strapped to his feet and shit. And I don't know, it was just fun to glide around and use your jetpacks and uh, just play with the physics to like extend the glide and make you go, you could go really fast or really slow and gain height. And it was just cool. It was just a cool fucking thing about that game. But unfortunately, that was probably the highlight of the game was the gliding. Yeah. And people, I see a lot of people in chat complaining about like, well, this is exp- I have to pay you money. Oh, you're, so are you streaming I, this? What? No, 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 no. Oh. Like, when, I, when I'm streaming, by the way, I do stream Heart of Florence, yes, but not yeah. right now. Oh, I thought so you were like, talking I, about in the chat, no, no. like live. I see people in chat when I'm streaming or I see people in the chat in the game who say, you're, I'm paying $50 to have to grind more. And that's always been like the base, the base people, argument. Man. And people like you and me, when we hear grind, we hear game to play. So like, I'm learning all of these masteries. Granted, each the deeper you go in the masteries for like any specific thing, like with gliding, the XP bar gets bigger, obviously, because you're learning something that's like an advancement for your character. But, but people bitch about that. They're like, oh my god, I can't believe I gotta do Oh, I can't believe you have to play the game they made. Like, believe it or not, they made an expansion in for you intending for yeah. you to play the fucking game, you stupid well, bitch. Dude, if you're into bacon builds, man, Crowfall. They revealed that they are going to be slating 1,500 skills for that game. Oh, my God. 1,500. Jesus. And it's an open-world PvP game, like sandbox game. and That's good. I mean, that's really good. Yeah. No, it's, I like that a lot. It's going to lead to, like... I feel like that's going to be a game where everybody... It, you're just going to constantly go, like, what the fuck? I have never seen that before. Because somebody's going to have some ridiculous combination of shit that mm-hmm. you just never would have thought of. Um... So I like that. The the amount of character customization and stuff you're going to be able to do in that game is like going to be off off the walls. Uh, the so game it should I, be, it should the be game cool. I got um, recently from a friend is called Paladins, 
And yeah, like, I actually have that as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy it. I I don't I don't. It's not like I don't get excited to play it, but when I'm playing it, I enjoy playing it. It's well. It's very well made. Um, I can't wait to see more characters come out of it because the characters right now feel like the cookie cutter. The, if you're making that kind of game, they all have to have that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy in any form. You know, like yep. there's got to be a dwarf that puts a turret down. <laughs> so it's like it's like it's gonna keep my attention until Overwatch, I suppose. Dude, Overwatch, Overwatch, Overwatch is coming out like at that. At the, I feel bad for all these games that are making these class-based shooters, and then for Overwatch to be like, yeah, we're coming too, because Overwatch is like really is a class <laughs> above them all. It's just like, yeah, your game is good, but it's not Overwatch. Oh. There's yeah, so like many bomb. games like that. There's there's a lot of hero-based shooters that are coming out right around where Overwatch is coming out, and I bet they're like going, fuck, fucking assholes at Blizzard, god damn it, because Overwatch is so good. Oh, it's so fucking good. They even uh, have a character in Paladins who is that that's like that goblin guy who rides inside of the mechanical robot. And uh-huh. his first person perspective is you see the, the goblin guy's hands. Oh, on that's the controls, cool. Which is kind of like D.Va. So I'm like, okay, yeah. whatever, you know? <laughs> well, no, Overwatch nobody has an ultimate doesn't really have that many original things, honestly. Tracer's pretty original, which is their leading character for Overwatch for sure. Uh,. I don't. I can't think of another game that's done something like Tracer, where you blink around and can go back in time. That's quite a fucking right. Yeah, new yeah. thing. Uh, but anyway, you want to you want to switch it up? Yeah. So, did you hear about the Obama executive on order for gun control? I have not. Are you a pro gun guy or? What's your stance on guns? Or I'm, a, you... I'm a guns are okay, but you shouldn't be able to own a gun unless you ha- know all the safety of owning a gun. Like, my mother got a gun, and I found it in her glove box. I was with her. We were going to lunch or whatever, and this was, like, like, earlier this last year. And I was like, you got a gun? And I picked it up, and I physically felt ill because this is a thing that murders people, and I don't know what I'm doing with it. So I immediately kind of put it down, and so... You, I think that if you if you don't feel that way when you pick up a gun, something's wrong with you. It's kind of like learning to drive. It should be scary, but there's a way to teach you how to do it properly. So yeah, you can have your guns. I'm not going to take them away, but I mean, but but I feel bad for those people who are so like, you're, yeah, you're pro gun essentially. I, I lean yeah. pro gun, but I do feel sad when assholes decide I'm going to go to this church and murder all these black people, and then everyone makes a big stink about how there should be better gun control. It's like, look, you cannot predict that this crazy person. Who yeah. is probably not acting crazy at all throughout their life? Because the reports are always like, "Well, that guy's always really quiet. He's a really quiet guy." You can't predict that that's going to happen. That's not gun control's fault. But st- yeah, I guess you could say I lean kind of pro gun, but I don't own one myself. That's essentially the same way I am. Like almost what you said to a T. Like I'm not anti gun. Uh, I'm. I would say I'm a little bit uncomfortable around guns. Probably not as uncomfortable as you are. Like I don't get physically ill. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people in my family have a lot of guns. My dad's got a gun safe that is just, like, apocalypse zombie ready. Um, I didn't grow up with guns either. That's Yeah, I, I grew up around them, but I, I'm i not, like, into them really. Uh, but I would say I'm pro-gun as well. But it is interesting that uh, somebody said something that I thought was very clever. He said, Barack Obama is the greatest gun salesman to ever live, and it's true. Like, every time he comes out and says some shit about, like, wanting to take people's guns away, Smith & Wesson's stock just fucking oh, of explodes. Yeah. Like, I, no doubt. Dude, they've sold so many. Obama has sold so many fucking guns throughout his terms. It's pretty ridiculous. Uh, but, yeah, I'm the same way. Like, my, my, my stance on guns, and a lot of people think I'm, like, some crazy conspiracy theorist for saying this, is, but uh, the, the whole reason... We have the, the Second Amendment is to protect ourselves against government tyranny. That's the fucking... It's it's so people, if shit got fucking crazy under the reign of Emperor Trump, wouldn't be completely fucking helpless against, against a tyrannical government. That's the whole reason the Second Amendment exists, in my opinion, is mm-hmm. to protect against government tyranny. And, I think and everybody thinks you're a order. fucking lunatic when you say that. You're like, wait, you think the government's gonna... No, not this government. Not Maybe not. Maybe it won't happen for 300 years, but that's the idea behind why it exists. Yeah, and I and 
I think a lot of responsible gun owners would recite the Second Amendment as that. Yeah, that's, it's that's just, the real reason. It's not reason. just the right to own a gun. Like, the reason it was put in was if our government got corrupt, we have the right to own weapons that can fight back against it. Yep. Whereas opposed to uh, the crazy people who are like, they're trying to take our guns away. Like, why would they do what? Gun, yeah. co- gun companies make money by you buying guns. If they're trying to take them away, there's big business that goes under. Like that's that's another part of being an American. You know, pursuit of happiness. The, you know, I want to I want to build a business and sell guns. That's what I want to do. If you kill off an entire industry because you know you make a law that says no guns, then that's un-American. You're not patriotic. But if you're a crazy person, you're like, dude, dude, you hate the government. It's like, yeah, I, I wonder, yeah, I wonder okay, if, yeah, I hate the government. What are you gonna fucking do about it? Shoot me to death? I wonder you know? if they're gonna. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if in the future there's gonna be a big push for where that like they really do want people to like turn their fucking guns in and they go around collecting them. I think people would actually lose their fucking minds. Uh, you would have a civil war. Yeah, I, I think that. <sighs> That's cause that's that is so scary though. Like a lot of people, the anti-gun people don't want to admit this. That uh, you know, when governments start rounding up the guns, is right about the time that things start going badly. You know, uh, and the people that are against having a government list with everybody that has guns on it, that makes sense as well. Because again, I think that's what happened in China uh, when China got corrupt under. Dao, Dao, Dao. I don't. I fucking don't know. I'm the wrong Zhao? guy. But you know, China had a, a real big corruption. You know, this tiff, a, a tizzy. They went on, went through for a while, and essentially they rounded up all the people that had guns, and then the government just went fucking crazy. Uh, and I think Germany, they had a list where everybody they knew all the people that had firearms, and they went after those people right before the whole Nazi thing happened. So. It does make sense why a lot of these pro-gun people are against having, you know, a government list of everybody that has guns, and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I, I just can't stand the people that are super anti-gun for all the wrong reasons, just saying, like, oh my god, Sandy Hook! <laughs> Even if there was no guns, it would still happen. It'd still fucking happen. And if honestly, I wanted to go, If I wanted to go and kill a bunch of kids, I'm not going to go to a gun store. I'm going to go to fucking Home Depot and build a bomb, not a gun. So... You know, yeah. And, in and case what, you were wondering, uh, and, and the sad part is, a lot of these like gun, these pro gun people who they kick up a bunch of dust about you taking our guns away. When you talk about po- like the like the thing, the trends when somebody actually goes into, like the Sandy Hook thing. When you talk about that, you're not you're not creating positive words and messages about guns. You're simply causing more of a problem. If pro gun people just ignored the stupid bullshit that happens. And they, and they know they're responsible, and they just preach the same thing. Be responsible with your guns. This guy clearly not responsible for his gun. He shouldn't even been given a gun. Unfortunately, he slipped through the, the cracks. Yeah. And there should probably be more regulation to keep people who are obviously nuts away from guns. But, I mean, that's also, like, how do you create the solution to that problem? I mean, how, yeah, do, how do you... Yeah, the, the you real can't... solution has nothing to do with guns. It's just identifying people that are mentally ill more effectively yeah. than we're doing right now. But... Right. That's a hard thing to do. And I mean, it has nothing to do with firearms. You know, if, if a crazy guy's going to go in with a fucking sword and stab a bunch of people, if there's not a gun, you know, people have been killing each other throughout, throughout the centuries. Like, doesn't matter. Well, that's another thing people say. Like, like you said, if somebody was using swords to kill people in a church or something. Yeah, that's, that's, that's no, there's this thing no that happened one... in China where some dude stabbed like 50 fucking people in a school. Like, it right. doesn't matter if you take the guns away. Um, but what I'm saying is that they will, the pro gun people will say, "See, look, why aren't we having a conversation about sword regulation?" It's like you don't have to say that. Just shut the fuck up and just let it yeah. happen. Because it's just gonna. If you kick up dust I, about it, it's bad. For I, your, I, I your, do feel like that the people that are pro gun should be touting what we said earlier about it being a tool for people to fight against a corrupt government if it ever happens. Mm-hmm. Which let's pray it doesn't. But or well, not pray. That's that's a fucking that's a fucking <laughs> figure of praying, speech. Man. <laughs> that's a figure of speech. But uh, yeah, let's pray. That would be the thing that would stop it. <laughs> sure. Anyway, uh, I think that should be the thing. That should be their champion. Their champion fucking point. Not the I want to protect my family and myself. Because realistically, you're not really. Rarely are people in situations where they have to protect themselves with their their firearms. I mean, it does happen. You do see the stories, but. Rarely. Um, but the real thing is to fight against a tyrannical government if it happened. Um, mm-hmm. 
And I think a lot of people do underestimate the power of 300 million plus guns in this country. Like, people seem to think like, oh, the military, they've got tanks. The, the, final, the final step of like, any war is always involves boots on the ground. And, I don't know, people really underestimate the power of 300 million people being armed with, right. you know, assault rifles. Like, the assault rifles that you can get, like the AR-15s, yeah, they're not like... They're not M16s or um, what M14s. I think the U.S. uses M14s. You know, they're not that good, but they're pretty goddamn good. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's like again, if somebody, if we had a, if we had a mad rash of people using katanas to like cut people's arms off and stab them to death or whatever in this country within two years, if somebody said, "Well, if you own a katana, you gotta give it up," I would personally be like, "No." I have six katanas. I don't run around using them to kill people. Yes, and they are sharp. And yes, I could hurt people with them, but I don't because I'm not an idiot. So I can kind of see where they where they come from uh, from their perspective on you know gun control and whatnot and things of that nature. Let's just hope the Vikings and Packers win this weekend. That's all. <laughs> what a segue. Well, I'm I've I'm not football. I. No, I didn't watch football too much. I was there for 2009 for the for the Brett Favre run, and the, we, the, you we actually got... segued into the fucking greatest topic. That was like the, the most. This is gonna be the most seamless <laughs> topic transition. I told ever. you. I'm, I told you. I'm practicing on these. No, 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 no. no. You did it. You actually. No, I was actually gonna talk about the Peyton Manning thing. You know, Peyton Manning got busted for using HGH apparent, apparently, which is human I forgot growth what hormone. H- okay. Yes. Um. Which is huge shocker. The people, professional athletes, are using performance enhancing drugs. Are are we retarded? Yes, of course they are. It's so fucking dumb. I think they'll be using performance enhancing drugs for the rest of the human race's existence. Yeah. Why? Why not? If I was a professional athlete, I would absolutely be using performance enhancing drugs. It's it's so obvious that they do, uh, strictly because of their recovery times. And that's what that's what Peyton Manning. That's what sort of you know, ratted him out is that he recovered from this, I think, neck injury, like, really quickly, and, uh, everybody was like, bullshit, how did he, what? And he was, you know, using human growth hormone, which helps you heal a lot quicker, and, uh, I think the most obvious example of this was, uh, Adrian Peterson, speaking of the Vikings, mm-hmm. uh, remember that one season he hurt his knee, like, early in the season or something? I heard and then he was it, yeah. Like, he, like, tore his AC, he, like, fucked his knee up, and then he was back, like, eight weeks later or some shit? I have had a knee injury before. Uh, I, I had a, an MCL injury, which is not as severe as ACL. It took literally fucking years for me to get my knee back to where it doesn't bother me anymore. Like the scar, like right now, it's actually like fully healed. But when I was actually playing football, that shit never never got a chance to heal. It took it took me sitting on my ass for years, getting fat as fuck, for it to actually like take some time and heal. And now it's actually better. So. Um, we don't talk about Adrian Peterson in Minnesota. What? The, oh, did he, he shouldn't he actually. He should not actually be on our team playing football. We all hate him because he what beats his, he beat up his kid using a switch like two years ago, mm. a year and a half ago. That's just how I discipline my two year old. Well, you beat them to death. Was it a two year old? Uh, he was a young kid. It wasn't like a fucking ten year old. See, know I, I mean? heard that story was blown out of proportion like crazy. No, it wasn't. He admitted to doing it. The NFL oh, suspended then, him. Yeah, but like I heard that that like the bruising on the kid was like really overblown. There, what? No, the photos explain exactly what happened. I need. I need to see it. It's one of he those things him, where there's there's there, it's not like a bruising. There's there, like there's a there's a fine line with this kind of stuff though because I, I feel like I, I don't know. I'm not one of those people that's against physical discipline for kids within reason. Um. But I'll tell you what. That's I'll a controversial me, stance. I'll tell you this. This is all I got to say. I got spanked when I was a kid. I never had blood come out of my ass when I got spanked as a kid. This kid got hit with a switch, and a lot of people don't even understand what a switch oh, is. Oh, I know, I know what it is. I know yeah. the premise. And the, the bruises on the kid, they were not just bruises. There were, like, there were tender red lines in the very middle of these black long lines on this kid's legs. Yeah, it'd be one of those and things I'd have to see it just to see how fucked up it is. Yeah, and it's not it, – it's – it's why would you do that? And then he admits to doing it. And the well, NFL yeah, well, to be able to be able to say if it's fucked up or not because – I don't know. I just have says, to – He's like, yeah, I do this all the time with my kid. This is how my kid learns. And the kid's got, like, 
you know, not scarring, but obvious, like, you can tell that he gets beat a so lot. So to, uh, to explain the Switch for all the people that don't know, uh, essentially, there is a form of punishment called picking a Switch. Is this how it was done when you were a kid? I, I never actually had this done to me, but I'm familiar with how No, how I never had done. this done to me. But it's uh, essentially, cool. it's a, a form of punishment, and it's called picking a Switch. And a Switch is essentially a stick. And uh, what normally happens is the parent goes, go pick a Switch, and, th- and a kid has to come back with a stick of whatever stick they choose uh, within, I guess, reason. I guess if they pick a shitty stick, they have to go back and pick another one. Um, and then the parent beats <laughs> the kid's ass with the stick that the kid has chosen. Uh, and it's kind of interesting because as a kid, you want to pick a stick that is firm but not too big, but not too small. Because if you pick a really small stick, it's like a fucking whip. So you have to find this, like, fine line between, like, sturdiness to where it's not a fucking baseball bat, but it's also not some, like, whip that's going to whip around your leg and fuck you up. Uh, So that's what a switch is, essentially beating your child's ass with a a stick. The way that it was explained in the media was that a switch is the type of stick that is thin and long like the end of a whip. Which is what causes... Those are the ones... Those are the motherfuckers, yeah. Yeah, there's no option like, oh, go get a stick. That, that's how... That's how... A I lot get... Of it, no, what oh. you're saying is true. It's absolutely a true thing. But yeah. this is Adrian Peterson grabbing his own personal Switch that he beats his kid with. And this kid's like four years old or something. So the guy's kind of a scumbag. So yeah, if he got caught with drugs or some shit, fuck yeah. him. Yeah. Him it, and it, Peyton Manning. It just depends on how bad he, how bad he beat his kid. There's definitely beyond... like. It's one thing that maybe one or two fucking here and there, like, whatever, but... It's just something that I could have live, lived without knowing that that's what he does to discipline his kids. Is that is that really, like, a fucking thing that made all of Minnesota turn against him, or is that just... Yeah. You? Oh, yeah. really? Everyone hates him for that? Even the football people are like, yeah, whatever. Like, he used to really? be so wow. much of a prince for us. We we're like, oh, he's, he could just run. Peyton that's Earth. crazy. Michael Adrian Vick, Peterson. Like, Killed everybody's favorite dogs, and now he's like, everybody's like, oh yeah, you know. I mean, he's still a long time ago, and now now he's like, kind of, people kind of like to see him do well again. Yeah, well, this was recent, you know. Yeah, this was recent when the Vikings were doing poorly, and so now it's just like, let's just what he beats this kid with a stick. Okay, fuck you too, and then, but like before this, it was like, oh, he's he's the greatest running back. He's so amazing, and it's like, eh, you know, but um, yeah. But, I mean, they're in the wild card round, and the Packers are also in the wild card round. So if they beat the Seahawks and the and the Packers beat the Redskins, then we will see a Vikings-Packers game, I believe. Or maybe not. And that's the, I, I know think that's the a winners, big rivalry. That's... The winners go on to f- take the Panthers and the Cardinals. I just want to see the Vikings versus the fucking Packers, okay? I will yeah, watch I know that. Yeah, that's, that's a big we one We love there. that shit up here. Yeah. Um. We went shit. 11 and 5. I can't believe that. <laughs> it's like we do so shitty. And Wait, then, like, you say oh, the record was? 11 wins and 5 losses for the Vikings. Uh, it's still good enough for the playoffs, though. Yeah, I know. Right. We're, uh, like, I said, like I said, we're in the wild card. No, we yeah. always get into the wild card, and it's like whatever, but we're facing the Seahawks, man. Like, we could beat the Seahawks. That'd be great. Seahawks are good, though. Yeah. Well, didn't they win the Super Bowl Super last Bowl? year? Uh, yeah, no, they didn't win it last year. The year before, <laughs> the worst the play of uh, uh, the worst play call of all time. Oh my god! The inflated ball shit? thing, or I don't know. I don't know you my have, football news from. Uh, you probably will remember this after I tell it to you because it was all over everywhere. But essentially, the Seahawks were on the one fucking yard line, and they have a running back named Beast Mode, and they throw the ball on the one yard line and it gets intercepted, rather than running the ball with the running oh. back named Beast Mode. Uh. Yeah. And they and they would have won. And they lost the game. Yeah. To to who the Patriots? Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> Dude, they're on, on the, the one, one yard fucking line. yard line. God damn. All right. Well, then and I they really... did not run the ball with a running back named Beast Mode that is notoriously good at going, at doing well in situations like that. So Come to find out, he's really good at taking really good at situations that yard. would involve running one fucking yard. <laughs> Well, then I really now I really kind of want to see us beat the Seahawks because you know what the absolute worst play in football is. I'm sure you've seen this happen a million times because it, it's it's so stupid. But you know, are you familiar with that play in football where you throw where you're on like the ten yard line or the one yard line and you throw that lob pass up to the corner of the end zone? 
for the receiver to barely catch out of bounds. Yeah, kind of, yeah. You know what that play always ends up being? A fucking interception! I yeah. cannot stand that play. Whoever came up with that play needs to be fucking executed because every single, every single team, regardless of like if they're pro or high school or uh, college... They, it is constant interceptions with that stupid ass corner of the end zone lob pass play. Oh my god, I hate that play so much. And they still run it. And I mean, it is it is cool as fuck when they do it right and that pass is perfect. But it is a free interception if that pass is just a little bit off. And you got to know that, like, if something like that happens, like you said with the Seahawks or something, it would be. You got to know it's like one of the coaches called that play. They yeah, do that. No, the, the, the we'll coach, the coach. That was the first thing he said at the the post game interview. He's like, "Yeah, I fucked that up, like real bad." He didn't say that, but he's like, "I messed up." Yeah, but Everyone at the same time, the he did call like, an onside kick in the. I believe this is the same game. Where he called an onside kick at the start of the half, which is ballsy as fuck, and it worked out for him. So nobody, uh, they they only want to shit on him for the stuff that doesn't work out. So I can forgive him for the shitty play. I mean, it was a shitty call, but. They did have that onside kick that was pretty gangster. Yeah. Um, this is baseball. The only reason I brought up the NFL shit is because this is basically, for me, the only time I ever really watch it. And if the Vikings aren't at least in the in the divisional round, I don't mm. watch it. Like, if they lose to in the wild card, I'm like, yeah, whatever, fuck it. I don't care. Because I don't care. I just don't. Because it's always the fucking Patriots for, like, the last five years, and it gets boring. Yeah. The Patriots, they're a dynasty, man. Anyway, I'll be right back. I gotta take a piss. If you gotta take a piss, just do it right now. I, I'm gonna edit this out. So, all right, we're back. Had to do a quick little uh, little potty break there. All right, you wanna you wanna switch topics? I guess that would make sense considering. Or, or as some of the uh, some in Europe they call it taking a piss. Oh, they, that's, they, that is they, what happened. When they well, that to them is like you're joking, right? Or you yeah. must be kidding. Yeah, I never. Yeah, you're taking the piss out of somebody. Taking the piss has never been explained to me, but I I still find it very very fascinating. Well, speaking of of Europe, you hear about the uh, the mass sexual assault in Germany by people of Arab, uh, people that appear to be Arabs. No, is this like a rising sexual assault? So there thing? appears to have been an organized gang of sexual assaults by Arab men's in, in by Arab men's. What am I fucking retarded? By Arab <laughs> men on New Year's in Germany. So essentially, there were a ton. Like a fucking shitload of like grope, like groping, and like just sexual assaults that happened on New Year's in Germany by people that are said to have been Arab looking. And Germany had that big whole, you know, that whole spiel with them letting in like tons of refugees. Mmm. You know. Can we just like. Can we just count out Arab people? when they do crazy shit from now on because it's like it's almost like they don't understand that they're hurting their ethnicity's cause because like oh, I, I don't want to go a completely different direction with that no i mean like look y- if you're arab and you do anything that's like fucking questionable or weird or you're like that little kid you he brought a clock to school that he built that and was they, bullshit. They, imme- they immediately I, I, were like, that's a bomb, you know? No, no, no. That was bullshit in the other way. That dude intentionally made that fucking clock to look like a bomb. That was a fucking publicity stunt by that family. Oh, was it? Was that? Yeah, it's, like, it's complete bullshit. They, they, had a, they have a past of doing this. Like, they're, apparently the, the kid's sister had done stuff like this before. The whole thing was a giant just publicity stunt and attempt to squeeze money out of the school. They were trying to. They're trying to sue the school for like five million dollars or something oh absurd for what happened. They made that. That dude. It was no mistake. That kid or that kid probably didn't make that shit to begin, to begin with. But that they did that intentionally. That was horseshit. See, I never heard the follow up to oh, that story. Oh, it's bullshit. Wow. That's why. That's why the news. That's why the news uh, stories ended about that. It's because they found out that it's just all horseshit. Oh wow. And you notice you don't hear about that kid anymore. All bullshit. All of it. Well, I thought, but anyway, I was, like I was saying, I thought you were going to go a different direction with the no, whole Muslim my, my thing. Point, my point's really simple. If you're Arab and you do something that's questionable or you decide, I want to get in a group of people together and we're all going to start groping motherfuckers on, on New Year's Eve, 
you're not helping your fucking cause. Because I don't want to look at every Muslim person and go, uh, I'm questioning, like, if you're about to kill me or blow this building up. I shouldn't have to feel that way. But when you all get together and do some stupid shit like this, it's not helping you. So yeah. stop it. Well, I mean, the, the, the reports are that it, it appears to have been organized and... Well, unless there's some, unless this is like some sort of like Muslim tradition to go and like grope people on New Year's, like, uh, how could it not have been organized? Like, this would have been the most insane coincidence ever for just a ton of Arab-looking people to just go and grope people on New Year's. Like, what kind of fucking <laughs> randomness is that? Uh, but the the, the, 20, the the direction 20, I thought you were going at first w- yeah. about the whole like Muslim thing is, I thought you were going to say that uh, you think it's an, annoying that you can't question. If a Muslim, like if if someone of Muslim descent does something badly, you can't say it because you're like deemed a racist. Like if if a bunch of Muslims go and do some horrible thing, and you're like, man, that's fucked up, and all those Muslims did that. Then you're like, oh, you can't you can't like criticize that at all. And it got to the point to where people on Reddit, some of the the moderators on the World News subreddit, were deleting this story. We're deleting the story of this mass Muslim sexual harassment thing because. Because it just wasn't... They didn't think it was politically correct. Because if Muslims do something badly and you say, oh, look, they did something badly, then you're just deemed a racist, even though it's just, like, a statement. That's where I thought you were going. You know what I mean? Yeah, Am I, am I wording this right? I get, I get what you're saying. It, it, it's, like, it's if like, a bunch it's of like white people not news, grouped it's not up... It's fucking important. Yeah, if a bunch of white people grouped up and groped a whole bunch of people... Then they would just be like, yeah, a bunch of white people went and did that. No one would bat an eye. But if it's like a bunch of Muslim people doing it, then you can't. It's like you're like the you're like the bad guy for saying anything. Well, that too. But they're also guilty because they got together and decided to do it. Oh, they're, they're both equally guilty. But you know what I'm saying about that? Where it's like, yeah, you should be because able to criticize they're Muslim. Them. You can't criticize it. Yeah, you should be able you, to criticize. You're them. made. You're made out to be a bad guy if you say. A bunch of Muslims did something when, in reality, that's what happened here. That's a fucking statement. And yeah. the political and it, correctness has gone so far that people are censoring what's actually happened because they don't want to offend Muslims. Like, it, it's, it's absurd. If, uh, if I were a Muslim person and I'm like, man, my, my ethnicity is getting a real bad rap. My culture really isn't like that. I should be able to question... And be critici- criticize the shit out of those guys. Because yeah. it's like, come on. Everyone should be able to criticize this. Because this is ridiculous. And if you were hiding this stuff and being like, well, we don't want to offend Muslims. And I were a Muslim person, I'd be personally offended by yeah. it. Yeah. It, it does probably have to be really frust- like frustrating to be a Muslim in a lot of ways. Because, let's be real. Like, the, the fucking... It's a, it's a problem area. To, to put things lightly, the, the Muslim religion, it's a fucking big problem area. No, not all Muslims are bad, but a high per- a higher percentage of Muslims are in this problem area than, say, other religions. Maybe it is only a small percentage, but that small percentage is significantly higher than most other denominations' small percentage of crazy. Uh, so, uh, uh, I, I get it. I mean, it, it, it's tough. It's tough to say that, man. I want to just I want to be be able to be like yeah not all Muslims are bad and obviously not all Muslims are bad but uh, pff, dude shit man it, it's like making it real hard it's making it real hard to uh, it's it's to it's be a, like I'm, super wel- welcoming to these refugees yeah it's a super like we just think about World War Two and like oh yeah Japan attacked America how long did it take for people to like get back in the good graces. How long did it take for J- for Japan in general to get back in the good graces of a majority of American people? I mean, I'm pretty sure there are people who are in their 60s or 70s and they're, they're probably still very biased against Japanese people because of what happened. Unfortunately, yeah. you and I are growing up... I think for the most part, it all is forgiven considering how much money Japan makes from the U.S. now. Well, yeah, but I mean... I don't know. That's in Toyotas general. are... I see lots of Toyotas, man. <laughs> I see them everywhere. But all I'm saying is there are probably older people who are like, yeah, fuck those jacks. Oh, yeah, you know? absolutely. Like, and they honestly feel that way. You and I are unfortunately living our lives in an era where, for whatever reason, it's Muslim people making all these fucked up decisions to blow people up or influence other people to blow people up 
or decide to get together and molest a bunch of people, which is weird. I guess they're just trying to be like, they're trying to branch out. Like, oh, instead of blowing people up, we just touched peepees and, and boobies tonight. Yeah, like, that is, that, that is weird. I, mean, I have really? to admit, that is a little fucking weird. But it's, it's, it's almost like they want to lean <laughs> back and go, oh, at least we didn't blow nobody up. It's like, well, yeah, what I is mean, I guess joke? they didn't do that. But it is going to be interesting to see what happens with Germany. Because Germany let in all those refugees, and people do not like that Angela Merkel. Like, she is not very popular in Germany right now because of this whole refugee thing. Is she, like, the prime minister or something? Yeah, of she's, Germany? yeah. I, I, I think it's prime chancellor, maybe, is Germany? Sorry. I don't know. Maybe it's prime minister. I fucking don't know German politics, but um, the leader, essentially. Um, mm-hmm. But apparently, she's not very popular over there for this thing. Apparently, there's a lot more backlash for this Muslim thing than the news is letting on. Because the the popular opinion of Reddit and all of these other fucking delusional places is that, oh my god, Germany, they're the fucking heroes. I remember when, when this whole Syrian refugee thing started, everybody on Reddit was like, oh, look at Germany, they're doing it right, they're letting the people in. Germany, that's the real place for freedom. And then this happens and everybody's like, you know, you guys are pretty fucking dumb for doing that. So it's going to be interesting to see the the ramifications for letting in all of these fucking people from a, a culture that is just radically different than modern culture. Well, the worldwide opinion of it is always going to be, look what happened, Germany, you fucked up. When in reality, they just wanted to help those people escaping the, the madness of what's happening in Syria. So... They genuinely were trying to help, but at the same time, it's like a bunch of people did molesting. I mean, can I? Is it Germany's fault? Can I really pin anything on Germany for this? Oh, no. I wonder, I wonder if there really is a lot of guilt from World War II. Like Germany, oh. like they're the last. They they really are the last great evil to have been. Like there hasn't been anybody more evil than Germany yet. I'm sure it will happen, but in terms of being evil on a mass scale and like. The Holocaust and doing lots of the evil shit they did in World War II, no one has topped that yet. Like World War II, incredibly deadly. So Germany, they're, they're still like the king bad guy, and I think they just wanted to be like, "Look, guys, we're not we're nice now." And this, oh, uh. yeah. I mean, um, if my if it was my culture that did some bad shit when I was before I was born and whatever, I'd be like, yeah, okay, you know, we've learned from it. It's good that we've learned from it. Um, but I I really hope Germany doesn't feel like we have to take these refugees in because we're Germany and look at our terrible past history with like. I, 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 I I'm sure that I know I know that people are like, dude, why the fuck? Like that's not really a thing, but I'm sure it is. I don't yeah, know. I, I hope not because Germany, you've done nothing wrong. Uh, recently, you. You don't have to bring in. You don't have to put yourself on the world stage and be like, "Yeah, okay, we'll take the bullet, um, good or like bad, they, whatever they happens though. to us." Like I feel like they they did do that. They're like, "Look at us, we're so fucking hip and cool and cute." Yeah, and everybody's but like, I mean, "Yeah, you're so cute." The thing of you, it is, you're though, gonna keep taking them in, right? Wait, what? No, stop, because that's what they did. They they literally were like, they they let a whole bunch of people in and like, "We're Germany, we're the well. Look at us, we're welcoming all these." refugees and then they were like whoa stop 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 close the gates too yeah, many really, too many too many nothing really negative has come from this yet i mean it's just like a prank. it's going to though it's a prank really it's just, it's just the refugees fucking, no <laughs> no the, the groping of people on 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 new year's eve that was just a fucking prank yeah, that a group yeah, of them much. decided i can't imagine that it was on a large scale you know what i mean oh no I, it was I, like all across germany all in Cologne, Germany. Yeah, lots. Like, whole lot, a whole bunch of sexual harassment on New Year's, like... Across all of Germany? Not all of Germany. Oh. But the capital, which is where I think most of them are. Uh, it's oh, like okay. the, the populous hotspot, essentially. For the refugees. Okay. For the refugees. And for a lot of people, I guess. But, they, but from what I've heard, um, the police chief resigned in, in, in that area... Uh, it's a real clusterfuck. Like it's from from all accounts. I would know. All accounts is organized. That's that's what I've heard. I, I'm not obviously. I don't know for sure, but they said it was so much, so many cases that it just had to have been. It's pretty wild. I, I, I don't understand why you would resign uh, because of this happening. 
Um, uh, apparently, the it could have been handled better. Maybe I, I, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't want to like be the guy. Maybe he doesn't want to be the fucking on. police chief with all of the refugees around. My thinking would be he probably doesn't want to be the police chief when his eventual fantasy of them all bombing a lot of shit happens. That he's not going to be responsible for uh, that happening. Honestly, if I was the police chief, I think he's seeing the writing on the walls. Like it's it's there are going to be serious ramifications for letting in all of these people from a culture that does not mesh well with other cultures. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't I mean, know. It does suck. Like I'm sitting here saying shit that does sound like a little racist. I I, I get it. Because I'm basically saying, like, oh, those fucking Muslims, they don't get along with people very well. But they fucking don't! Their culture is so radically different from the modern culture of... of The world. The world. Really? It's it's the Stone Age. It's it, They're not going to mix well. Muslims, you really need to, like... I mean, Muslims out in the Middle East, you know? Y'all really need to, like, do what Japan did and kind of look at yourselves and go, yeah, this is a little crazy. Because some of the shit that Japan was doing prior to uh, getting involved, they were crazy. They would, like, teach everyone how to kill soldiers with, like, spears and shit. Like, if anybody comes onto our island during this, like, World War conflict shit before they were part of the Axis, they had everyone, old people, young people, kids, everyone had a weapon. They don't have an army. They turned their entire country into an army. And it's just like, then you look at yourself and you're like, yeah, we fucked up. They were pressured to bomb us via sanctions and like embargoes uh, by the access, not sending them any you know supplies and things like that. But you gotta fix your shit, Middle East Muslim people, crazy people. Fix your fucking shit and don't don't do this shit when you come into Germany and go oh because ho, 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 you're not you're letting your entire I don't like to use the word race, but you're 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 letting your entire culture down by being like this. Yeah. And I, this this can't last this long. This has lasted and for fucking like forty five years now. You need to get your shit. It's get your shit that. together. I don't give a this, shit. This, this shit is not old, not new. Well, no, I mean like ever since like Persian Gulf and like actual conflicts with the Middle East in this in in the well, previous they've been, century. They've been in conflicts with each other. They've been fighting each other. That's fine. You can fight each other. For have fun. Forever. But when it affects like other people and it fucks your culture up so much that you think that it's cool to go around molesting everybody uh, in Germany on New Year's Day or New Year's Eve, that's you're you're too far gone. You just need to get your shit together. I don't give a fuck. Get it all together. Take it to the shit shop and sell it for all I care. Yeah. And I mean, there are cultural cultural problems with lots of other like races and religions. For example, I there's things about white culture that I hate. I hate ha- the overparenting in white culture where everybody's kids have to be in soccer practice and then go to band practice and then go and do all this shit where you've got these kids that have every single fucking uh, aspect of their life managed by their parents and then they just turn out to be socially retarded because they never had to deal with any real situation. Uh, school shootings, white people, we've got that shit on lockdown. Um White collar criminals. We kind of do though. That's on, that's on. We've chuckling. got that on lockdown, man. When it comes to like not paying taxes and really abusing and being corrupt financially and political corruption, we us white people, we have got that shit on lockdown. So there's stuff about every culture that is just f- absurd. Uh, so let's. We. we I, know, I, I know a lot of people are gonna. <laughs> we've been very anti-Muslim recently so let's just even it out a little bit so that's that's where i wanted to go with that um yeah my point is my culture doesn't worship uh, yeah, if, a prophet you, that molests you, children yeah. and fucking rapes children and then the, then you say i mean that's bullshit that's probably where that all came uh, this, from it's like okay, oh yeah muhammad this, a, this let's go fucking this is a perfect example leaders. uh you can draw jesus dante you're a good artist right you can draw jesus you can i'm not gonna draw. cut your fucking head off for it you can't even draw Muhammad. You can't draw him. And what? There's now, there is now a Draw Muhammad Day as a holiday. Congratulations, everybody. Draw Muhammad all you fucking want. If they come after you, eventually the world will correct itself. You can't, we, you can't continue to stay crazy. When this you, is ridiculous. When you can't draw a dude, and you can't even right. refer to a dude, that's fucking stupid. It's it is it's really dumb. It's so and fucking like what we have the internet now. Like 
I why, just, why, why can't we draw people? Go get them a bunch of fucking sex dolls and send them some fucking PS4s, Xboxes, and some internet, and they'll be fine. They'll figure their shit out. It's fine. It's just that that just, time yeah, they will just come Netflix, eventually. Man. That, yeah, all this that, shit would be like a non-issue if they just had Netflix and like internet porn and shit. You know what my my idea of a good time? Let's say I had to. I was in a different city, and I'm not from that city, and I was there on uh, New Year's Eve with uh, you know I have no friends. You know what a really good time is? Getting some drinks somewhere and mingling with people that you don't know. That's usually what normal fucking human thing, beings though, would like do. That, like some people really do. Like they just they have that urge to just go and like they want to just conquer shit. It's like let's go conquer these motherfuckers. Because that's essentially, I, I'm assuming that's like what ISIS's goal is. That's pretty much what everybody's goal is that does crazy shit like that. They want to be the guys in charge. And See, like, the thing of it is, like, the ISIS ideology is so fucking stupid because we teach kids in, we teach kids in our own country the, the lesson that that is really just the stupidest fucking thing to, like, conquer everything or rule the world, quote unquote, because in our children's cartoons... The bad guys all want to rule the world. And at some point in time, they're asked, well, what happens after you rule the world? And they don't have an answer. They're just like, well, I just want that. It's like, okay, well, that's a cartoon, not real life. It's not yeah. going to happen. You're not going to rule the fucking world, Isis. I'm sorry. It's never going to fucking happen. More than likely, statistically, you will be annihilated off the face of this planet by every country eventually you will become so fucking annoying that every country will just be like where are they they'll and just go there and kill them all it's just going to be rebranded that's all it's going to happen they'll rebrand it and if it's a fucking thing we got to do every if five years ISIS, it'll these be motherfuckers. Fucking some other acronym like it is you're never going to kill it but it's, it's fine what i'm saying is we don't go after it aggressively now because it, we're afraid that that will cause a lot of harm globally once eventually they're gonna get so annoying i don't know maybe ever trump dude he's gonna cut the head off and take the fucking oil hey you know what i heard they're made of oil when you cut their heads off. yeah like, really it's not even blood it's just fucking delicious oil <laughs> Ugh, you, you isis you the, how do i word this yeah. isis trump is the president you deserve for us to elect Dude, Honest you know fucking what's so God. fucking crazy though is that everything in the world is heating up right now, like in terms of conflict, mm -hmm. that it's only going to help Trump. Like, let's be real, there yeah. will be another serious terrorist attack, if not multiple, before the election is over. Right. There will probably be another serious terrorist attack in the United States before the election is over, mm -hmm. if not multiple. I'd hope uh, not. I, 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 I hope. I hope I'm wrong, but I, I'm. Statistically, I think I'm very. Uh, I don't think I'm saying something that's like completely uh, crazy. Like I think it's very probable that there will be another terrorist attack in the United States of decent scale the before only the thing, election, if not multiple. And it's only going to make Trump look better. And if it happens like close to election day, Trump's dick will get so hard. If there's some big terrorist attack where like you know 30 Americans die or whatever. Dude, it's over. Trump fucking... President Trump. Oh my god. Kill me. The only positive thing that comes out of a terrorist attack happening in a country that's not ours is that country finally knowing what it feels like to be attacked by these stupid fucking crazy people. I think at this point everybody's, everybody's been hit by it. Um, India? Maybe not 9-11, but... I'm well, pretty sure that, everybody hates ISIS. Like, I don't, I don't think that's an yeah, issue. Yeah, I'm, but I'm, I'm just of the opinion that until I'm pretty sure France really didn't give that many fucks until they got attacked. Like now yeah, they really no, care. I, I mean, they helped. sent jets immediately and those people live, but fucking only a couple thousand miles away from you. We're landlocked from these assholes. Right? So we're worried about it in our own way, but they're your goddamn neighbors and you people don't figure your shit out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah they'll, it does, they'll, it, there will you, you, you thinking that there will be a, ter a terrorist attack that'll get, more steam for um, Trump is probably very accurate, but I doubt it'll be in the United States. It'll be somewhere else. Dude, the, the San Bernardino thing, that happened. Like what? Ha what happened? You know, the San Bernardino thing was a Muslim terrorist attack. It was a fucking terrorist attack. What happened? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> there was a terrorist attack where like these two Muslim people went up and shot up some uh, old uh, like fucking 
recreation center of some kind. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm talking about when it comes to terrorist attack. I'm talking about like oh, you're talking acts about of violence small... by Muslims. Oh, I'm talking about some shit. You're talking that about. You're talking, are you thinking about 9/11? Like, I don't think there's gonna be another 9/11 before the. Like, at least I hope not. No, but I'm the small terrorist attack. It that will help Trump, whatever. But if I think there will be many if of some those shit actually the explodes and buildings fall, not 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 skyscrapers or anything like that. But like if something happens, are you talking about like a Paris? Style. I'm talking about. In the US. I'm talking about Boston, Massachusetts level or higher. Something happening anywhere. Two things are going to happen. Trump will take advantage of it, and wherever the fuck that happened, those people will wake the fuck up. Because I I feel a lot of countries out there are just like, whatever. They don't like America because they don't like Christianity. They don't like them. But they're your fucking neighbors. You think they're going to come kill you too? Of course they will. They've already declared that everyone other than ISIS is a fucking yeah, enemy. Yeah, everyone. But because them. they're crazy, you know? It's like, get your shit together, everyone else. We can get rid of these assholes. And, it, and I don't care if it, they pop up again and it's called Stupid Idiot Club. Fine. But Stupid Idiot Club is going to learn that what, when you create Stupid Idiot Club, we're just going to fucking kill all y'all again. I don't like sounding like that, but I'm at that point now where I'm like, it, these people are literally a cancer to society across the world, and we don't deal with them. I don't know why we haven't. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. It, man, it must suck. Ass. Like, I know this is gonna sound racist, but it must suck ass to be like the good guy Muslim over oh, in that area of the world. Like, obviously, the Muslims. Like, there's there's a lot of people in the U.S. that are of Muslim descent. And they don't really, I mean, yeah, there are some ignorant assholes that are racist to them, despite them having no affiliation with anything over there. Mm. Um, but to be one of the good guys over there, it must really suck. Like, to be an actual, like, good guy Syrian refugee, that must be so frustrating. Because you must be sitting there like, guys, can we stop fucking molesting thousands of people on New yeah. Year's? Yeah, that's enough. Can't we just, like, chill out and just enjoy the fact that... That these people, like, for whatever reason, decide to let us in. Like, fuck. We caught a lucky break, you guys. Yeah, are I know, right? Can you guys just chill the fuck out? Because there, be there was a point where, like, well, well, I mean, I guess that was the point. No one wanted to take them in. No one. And I don't, I, I am an American. I fucking don't know where Syria is, but I know that it's near Germany. I don't know if it's bordered with Germany or whatever. But no one around that country wants to take you in. Or the other countries that are around that country are probably all on board with ISIS anyway, as it is. So you got you caught a lucky break. And if, if this is seriously a fucking joke to you people, then you will be sent back to Syria where ISIS will kill you anyway. Because you ran away. Figure your shit out or Emperor Lord Trump, Trump. will fucking fix it for you. This almost makes me want to vote Syria for Syria is really near does. Germany. Is nowhere? No, Why Germany? Germany. Why Germany then? Because Germany has very good uh, welfare laws. Okay. Germany has a, a, from what I've heard, an excellent uh, welfare system. Um, Why didn't Turkey take any of these people? Why didn't uh, Jordan? Why didn't Israel take in any of these people? Why? Because they know that these people are fucked up. You're well. You these fucked people they... probably don't want to go to Iraq. <laughs> like. Well, no, yeah, let's let's, think, let's leave Syria to go to fucking Iraq. Um, no yeah. thanks. Yeah, I mean Germany Iraq is ain't... like looking at all of these countries that are nearer here. Germany is probably the nicest one. You have all these options. Well, you were you were given an option. Hey, we we would like to leave our country because you know it's fucked up here right now, and, and we like fear of death and all this stuff. You get a you get a chance to go somewhere. And it's not a neighboring country, and you, then you want to fuck this up, really? Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's sad. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but this is why we won't let you into our country, and it's we just not gonna happen. are America. Like, people... We're we're that country that said, "Come, bring us your tired, your sick, your poor. Come on over here, opportunity and all that stuff." And now it almost seems like the smartest thing to do to be like, "Where are you from? Syria? No, nope. get the fuck out of here." Because it's I know it's so fucked up, but it's like. And here's the reason why this is not a stupid thing to do. It's a very smart tactic. You don't let Syrian refugees into your country because ISIS can just say, you 500 guys that are a part of ISIS, your, um, your mission 
is to pretend you're a refugee and some other country will accept you and then we can execute operation molestation <laughs> okay maybe this see, uh, think I, about I, don't, it, I don't know if the uh, see I, I don't know if the whole like germany sexual harassment thing was an isis thing or if it's just a cultural no. if it's just a no no i don't think of it like that i don't think there's a cultural thing where like they just it's okay to touch people's wieners and stuff honestly dude it I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid when I say this. This could be seriously an ISIS thing where it's like, yeah, here's a couple of, we got a couple hundred guys. They said they're refugees. Oh, Germany is where you're going to go? Okay, cool. Because ISIS is connected with their little plots, their little, uh, not plots, but like See, groups got, of people through yeah. the internet. These guys are smart, new, new age terrorists. So they probably all executed that just to make the Muslim community look I, bad. I think, I think that you are underestimating how far back in the Stone Age the fucking Muslim culture is because my I brother actually went over there. to Iraq and he said it is like they fucking wipe their ass with their own hand and then shake people's hands with that same hand immediately well, like after. Indian. Like it is yeah. like Stone Age of like Stone Age. I so, just don't see. I it I, it doesn't translate yeah, to me. Stone yeah, Age, I, I, I Stone agree. Age equals I can molest anyone I want because I agree. Fun. But it is but the Stone doubt. Age over there. Yeah, and you got to think like. In that culture, women are covered up. And on Ger in Germany, I bet there was a bunch of good-looking fucking German women, all scantily clad, being all fucking yeah. modern and shit with their iPhones. If it was all women who got molested, I would believe you. Yeah, I'm but sure in it this was case, predominantly sure, mostly women. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm, there were dudes in there, too. I mean, maybe a bunch of dudes. Maybe. I mean, maybe a bunch of... Maybe... I'm sh I'm sure there were some dudes that got groped, but, but I would assume that it was m mostly women. Here's my logic: You're a Syrian refugee, which are predominantly age, mostly men of a Stone Age country that we presume. I'm going to presume you don't know how to speak German, and you're brought into Germany as a refugee. If you're so fucking dumb to have everybody get together and go, let's just start touching people. <laughs> Then, Dude, it is strange, then you've lost man. me. You've lost me. I don't give a fuck. Bomb the whole fucking country. Wipe these people out. I don't care if I sound like Hitler right now. If this is the way you think, please accept us. We hate our. We're fearing of being killed in our own country. And then you all get together, not knowing German. Decide, hey, we're gonna do this thing. That, you're fucking, it is such oh, you're a weird so thing, though. Stupid. Like, why would a whole bunch of them just go and start groping people? Like, what is the fucking deal with that, man? That I can't is so wait. For weird. It. I can't wait for on Fox News the 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 uh, the cultural expert person who it, knows exactly why this happened pop up and go oh uh, yeah in Syria it's on uh, January first it's, it's National fucking whenever there's a giant, day. whenever there's a whenever there's an event where everyone is uh, is uh, uh, taking part in a gigantic celebration this happens <laughs> in Syria I feel like there's got to be some sort of disconnect because why the fuck I mean maybe ISIS would like initiate Operation Pedo mm -hmm. but. It is very weird. To take a small chunk of guys and girls, maybe guys and girls, who knows, small chunk of the refugees and say, hey, look, we're going to all go around groping people. And it's going to make everyone else who's very glad to be in Germany and away from the madness look like they're just as crazy as the people who committed the, the molestation. That I don't find to be outside of speculation. And if yeah. something comes back around no, where like ISIS did this, I'd be like, okay, cool. You know? So, yeah, I, ISIS's whole thing is they want to turn everybody against all Muslims and have this like religious whole holy yes! war. That's their that's their fucking goal. But they're just they they want to eradicate everyone who is not like their specific brand of religion. Like I, that's the way it's been explained. Yeah, that's like, that's my their version of Muslim is like you yeah, have that's the to, cliff notes. If there's like if there's like one thing that you disagree with, it's like pff, your head's gone. Like we don't want you around. And so now they want to make enemies out of all muslims to where and it's work that's how terrorist terrorism works basically you're changing the minds of people yeah and it's working i'm sorry it's working it is working it is working and i i feel like an idiot for saying like we shouldn't take these fucking people in but people are delusional when they say that we should because they're like well we should take them in but we should properly vet them first not realizing that that vetting process takes five plus years or it takes a very long years and this is before the influx of hundreds of thousands of maybe potentially millions of refugees like you're not gonna vet these people you 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 have to pull a germany and just let them in 
What if, if, you, if you're going to let him in? What if, and this is like a serious question, because I believe this that, that this may happen. What if they're doing such a good job of making all the refugees look like they're all part of this crazy, like, religious shit where we have to question them, but we can't vet them, but they're already in the country. What if we see them, like, put them inside of a camp? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's got to be a place in Germany, right? Where is this, you, is this one of Trump's ideas? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like, I'm thinking about this seriously. Like, if if these people are all in your country, they don't know your language, they don't know your culture. <laughs> weird shit is what happening. If we just right? round them all up and put them in camps. <laughs> if you are so scared of these people, right? Because this is just stage one, pedo pedo mode is stage one. What if random refugees start stabbing people, or what if something happens? Would in in our in 2016 would it not be uh, not crazy to think that rounding them all up and putting them somewhere where then they can be vetted and released from this place because we know they're safe so we can catch the fucking hidden ISIS motherfuckers how how does like to me that doesn't sound crazy I, I think it's more realistic for us to not let them in but try to solve the issues in Syria like no. via military I think that is I'm not talking about letting them into the United States. I'm talking about how they're already in Germany. If yeah, Germany things fucked start up. to yeah, if things up. start to elevate, is it not outside of the, the can you would it be so impossible to believe that a solution would be to put them all somewhere, properly vet them and release them into society, the ones who we know after they're vetted that they're not fucking crazy because do you know I mean, that there's a way to find the secret ISIS motherfuckers in that group? Yeah. I mean, the one thing they could have done was Instead of just letting them into Germany, say, like, hey, if you want to come into Germany, then you can come to this designated spot in Germany if you want to. Mm -hmm. But we're not making you. But if you do want to come to Germany, this is, you know, this this, is the said spot. This is is where you can go if you want. But outside of this, you can't go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I can see that working. I know it sounds like it sounds sounds really bad. I, I get it. But this is not World War II. We're not talking about, like, the the issues that when it came to, like, Germany invading other countries and, and whatnot. We're talking about fucking people who can drop missiles from, like, drones and shit now. Like, yeah, I, I don't know what you do. But I don't want the refugees who are the good guys, you know. Because uh, there, there, there are probably, you know, I'm sure the numbers are insane. Like, I'm sure, like... It is some small percentage of these refugees that actually are fucking lunatics. But Mm -hmm. as I said previously, that small percentage is still much larger than other people's small percentage of crazies. Like, the amount of crazy Christian people is (laughs) less than the amount of crazy Muslim people percentage-wise. It is. It's just true. Like, there are a bunch of Christian people going and doing these mass acts of terrorism. Yes, it does happen. Sure, but it's less. If if America needed refugee, or if if there were American refugees and shit was going down here, and you let me into Germany, and then a bunch of my kinsmen who speak English came to me and said, hey, look, you're one of the refugees, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, tonight, we're going to just grab penises and pussies and boobies tonight. I would just look the, look at them and go, no fucking way! Are you insane? And yeah. you know that you know that there were people in that refugee group who were like, "That's fucking insane! Why would you do that?" And yet, it's still going to make me the guy who said no to the whole idea yeah, look, look like, like I was guy. in on it. Yeah. So you know, it's I'm tough, sorry. man. It's it's a fucking real sad situation. That it's tough. It, Trump is the president we need to solve this problem. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! What a soundbite! What a soundbite that is. I would love Trump. Trump, I can do voiceover work for your next commercial. Just call me. Could you imagine that shit? You're on the next 30-second commercial. Donald Trump. (laughs) And it's your voice. Your voice. And he's like, Trump wants to stop all Muslims from entering the country. And fuck Mexicans. (laughs) I would love to be a part of it. I would do it. I would so do it just because it would be so funny. Fuck Mexicans. And fuck Muslims. I'm Donald Trump, and let's make America great again. And oh, I, approve, I approve every crazy thing I say. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I think we've hit everything. I've got a few more topics, but we've been going a while, and 
Yeah. This stuff can wait. Um, oh, yeah, you want to talk about the Nicole Slaw thing, but what is there to say? Oh, um, ban the bitch, please. Just I think, ban I think her. I, I checked it today, and she's still banned, so I think she's just, just perma banned. Just don't, 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 just don't allow her to come back. That's, that's the best way to punish her. I mean, she's going to lose out on so much money from not being able to cam hoard up on Twitch and, anymore. And the other, the other thing is, too, is that I wanted, I wanted the Nicole Slaw thing to segue into something small, and this will be very quick. We don't, there's it's not a whole fine. lot of talking to be done about this. Um, there is a YouTube channel called Drama Alert, ran by some asshole named Keenstar. I kind of like channel, that channel. His, his channel is growing. His channel is exploding. Right. Unfortunately, he is manipulating a lot of people and turning their good reputations against them to create drama. Uh, there's been people have been investigating this guy. So this guy basically, he's like, um, oh, I'm very familiar with with Keenstar. Oh. oh. Are you familiar with the fact that, like, Drama Alert's, like, his seventh channel? Yeah, he had to, uh, so he got banned off of, he got permanently banned off of YouTube uh, because he was selling YouTube partnerships. He started his own network and would sell YouTube partnerships for, like, 20 bucks, and he would just partner somebody's channel, which is obviously against the terms of service. Uh, so he got banned off of Google AdSense. And He's doing it now. He's doing the same shit again right now. Well, the only reason he's able to even have a YouTube channel is because hit that YouTube channel is in somebody else's name, and he found some sort of loophole to where he is like a contracted worker, to where he oh, sure. doesn't actually own that channel, but he pretty much does. Well, the the banning him because he was doing that aside, the man is just a evil person. His other channels that he has made, basically, this dude made a channel, made a channel, made a channel, and made a channel. And they were all very different channels. And whichever one hit, whichever one went kind of viral, he would go with. And one of his channels, he's literally a guy who, like, hates his fans and wishes they would all die. And that's, like, the character that he's playing. And so people have found all of these different videos of him saying, like, this guy should die because he's a black person or he's using the N-word, so he's racist. And And this isn't, like, a character he's playing. This is him. This is this man's opinion of how people on YouTube should treat other people on YouTube because it's all like, apparently to him, it's all like a rat race to become popular and be successful and make a boatload of money. And it's just like fucked up what this guy is doing. Now, yeah, he- him, him exposing the fucking like lion maker thing, fine. People want the, the, the mom or the whomever, the mom and the daughter want to come to him and expose what's going on on there. And it's so- like real, it's real fucking news and stuff. Fine. But now it's like, let's try to fucking ruin somebody else's career. Let's mention so-and-so. And And so now somebody who is affiliated with um, Markiplier, he's now like being vetted as a a child molester or into the kiddie porn shit too. And it's like, what? Like, what is happening? Now everybody's going to get like micro examined and and all this shit just because this guy brought this crap up. Yeah. yeah. But the guy, the man himself is kind of just like a fucking indecent person. Yeah, he's definitely not a nice guy. Uh, he's got he's got some bad back, bad rap. Yeah, I'm not sure I mean, what I, I think of him. Uh, part of me kind of likes him because he does do some like pretty hilarious and clever shit. But I'm not going to say he's some sort of good guy either. Oh, uh, I, I get that people find him funny because he's eating popcorn as drama is happening all around him on Skype. Well, and stuff. I, I see, I'm familiar with this guy before drama alert. Like I've been around like the Call of Duty scene and the Halo scene. He did. He was a big. He was one of the first big YouTube stars for like Halo Three, back at, way back in the fucking day. And he used to troll people on Halo Three, and uh, it's very primitive now if you go back and look at it. But at the time, it was fucking hilarious and. I don't know, the dude has been around the YouTube gaming scene for a while now, and he's done some good shit, uh, but he's also, like, apparently a wife beater as well, like, he beat his wife and keyed her in the face, and he's not a nice guy, but... He's a, he's a lawyer, and his, re- his actual job is he's a lawyer. I don't, think, I, think he, I don't think he does that anymore, I think he just... Mm. He, I know he used to work at, a, like, a law firm, uh, but I don't know if he's yeah. a lawyer. If he works at a law firm, then he's a, either a paralegal... Or a something to do with and, it. And it's like the guy. Well, I mean, the guy found a, a loop. A law firm. The guy It'll found a, a loophole on in YouTube to get his ass back from being permanently yeah, banned. I'm pretty I'm sure, sure the guy savvy. knows his way around yeah. certain laws and shit. So he's kind of a scumbag there. But just, I I feel really sad 
and really afraid for these people who do like Yami Mash. Like Yami Mash was on on. So basically, what I'm saying is this: Keenstar can basically fucking make any video and say any YouTuber has been caught for being uh, of somebody who is into child porn or something. He can just say that now without any proof, and a shitload of people will believe him. That I don't like. And he's doing yeah, a shitload that. of people will believe him, but uh, may I don't know. What, what what specifically happened with one of these guys that you like? What, what what like specifically happened with who you're talking about? What happened to them? Yeah, like where they got fucked over by Keemstar. Like what? Like who was the person? Keemstar said Yami Mash has photos of little girls and like tries to get them into uh, hotels at when he goes to conventions. And Yami Mash is associated with Markiplier, and so Mark like distanced himself from Yami Mash and all this other shit. Well, was and it's he? just like, what's happening? No, well, but there's no proof that he did it. Oh, just normally, like, right. normally he shows like a bunch of proof, and it's actually like pretty damning evidence. He shows a picture of a he shows a blurred picture of a little girl, and then he shows a picture of a selfie Yami Mash took with a woman who you can't even tell how old she is. She doesn't look young. She doesn't look. She looks. Mm, I'd have to see like it. she might be I, nineteen I'd have to or see twenty it before making a judgment call. But I know it's in the. So, I know with the past drama alerts I've seen, it's actually been like, like at first when I first started watching him, I was like, this is pretty stupid. And then, like normally, it's like there is a like a lot of evidence in it. He makes some people look like trash. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know about this specific situation. Yeah, but if the Markiplier I, dude actually distanced himself from this guy, then I feel like there might have been at least some legitimacy to it. Yeah, it's uh. I mean, the dude I'm has saying, exposed a lot of fucking people doing a lot of fucked I'm up saying, shit, especially with Minecraft. I'm, so, all I'm saying is that this guy has the power to ruin people's reputations, and he's already started doing it, and I don't like it. Oh, well, he's it's been doing it for a while. He, I haven't heard of him, and I'm online. I don't play Halo. I don't play Call of Duty. Yeah, now see, I if you were if you were involved in those communities, you you this guy's not new. This Keemstar guy has been, has been around for a while. <laughs> fine, fine, that's fine. He's not new. Yeah. But what he what he's doing isn't trolling anymore. What he's doing is ruining people. No, lives. he's definitely got his own little little news show that is popular. But he's ruining people that. It was. <sighs> it went from funny watching him talk about like so and so on Twitter tweeted so and so and they had a Twitter war. Isn't that fucked up? I, I, I do kind of think went that from him that, outing actual pedophiles in the Minecraft straight. community is actually like pretty good like it's actually like justice in a way fine that's fine because there's proof but now the guy is at a point where it's like i can say anybody's name and say well turns out this guy was caught yeah yeah but little girls too like, guy fuck, actually man? distanced himself from the guy as well so it makes me think that there might have been some legitimacy to it you otherwise would, he wouldn't have you are you saying that if somebody that you have done collaborations with for a number of years was associate or was uh someone said oh Turns out that guy ha is all into kitty porn, and you strongly believe that he doesn't, and you wouldn't back away from him. No, unless unless it was something that was, unless there actually was evidence. What? Well, what if? What if you didn't know? What if there was no evidence yet, but there would be some later, or you didn't know if there was going to be any? Mm, you I wouldn't would wait, distance I would wait yourself. Until there was you would wait. Okay, so this is the problem. He can accuse whoever. And instantly you have to distance yourself from him. Because the see, accusation, that kind of an accusation the, is The only so reason I'm defending him, and I'm not a Keemstar fan by any means, but the only reason I'm defending him is, is because typically he has pretty good evidence when he, when he does come up with these things and say and these And I things. hope he continues to have pretty good evidence. But this bullshit of, a, oh, here's a picture of this person with their girlfriend who is probably legal age, and then him going, well, I guess he's dating little girls. It's like, what the fuck? And, and on top of that, you can sit in a room with a microphone and pretend like you're a, like you're a legit news source by saying the people that work here at Drama Alert found out so and so is a pedophile. Are you serious? You fucking run a studio of people who scour the internet looking for Yeah, proof? he actually does have a bunch of really? people do that shit. He bunch does of, have like, a bunch beta. of people. Yeah, I know. It's like I don't know why people do that, but people actually do that for him. No, it's I don't unreal. mean like from I don't mean from their homes. I mean like there's an office with no, people. No, no, he's just got a shit. whole bunch of people that he's like got uh, doing free work for him to essentially scour Twitter for all this shit. Yeah, that 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 that's really like the penultimate thing that I don't like about the guy. 
the lowest level of how much I dislike the guy is the fact that he has like this fake ass news person voice. It sounds dumb. And at the end of every video, he likes to remind you. To uh, leave one like. <laughs> oh, he says, uh, he says, can we get drama alerts? 760. Thousand subscribers. What's crazy but is that, that at drama alert channel, button. he's made like 10 of them. There's been like 10 separate drama alert channels because before he found the loophole with YouTube, YouTube would just shut him down. <laughs> so he'd have like a drama alert channel would get like 50,000 subscribers and then it gets shut down by YouTube and he'd make another one. He did this that shit point. like 10 times before finding a loophole. This is just my point. You can't have a YouTube channel and be a racist bigot and shout hate towards Wait, another. Look at us, we're doing it. Uh, well, we're not uh, we're just discussing kidding. a topic. I know, but the but whole you can't do thing. that. YouTube will not allow you to spread hate and bigotry and racism on this website. This guy is starting to cross a line in which YouTube will eventually go, look, you fucking can't do that because you're See, basically manipulating false information that is causing so-and-so to lose their career based on false information. So... A lot of the stuff that I've seen about Keemstar where people, like, say he's racist and stuff, like, I don't think he's racist because I just don't think a lot of... I think a lot of people that are accused of being racist aren't racist because I feel like it's actually pretty goddamn hard to be a There's true a lot of proof that he's racist, racist There's a lot of videos that are online that the man deliberately uploaded himself. This wasn't, like, on so accident. That, no, so a lot of those are from, like, the Halo trolling, like, trash-talking days. Yeah, like, so he's he used fucking to racist. Do. So he's racist. No. So he's racist, right? He says, like, nigger a bunch of times, and he's not racist. I said, I said nigger once in one video, and I feel like shit for it. I'll probably so, feel like shit for the rest so of my the life. Whole thing, the guy, whole, like, shtick with Keemstar back when he used to do the Halo videos is he would do anything to make somebody mad. And if that meant calling somebody a nigger, then he would do it. So that's, that's the mindset I have when I... Because all those clips of him that people are bringing up are from, like... They're ancient from from back in those days, uh, and maybe maybe I'm too optimistic, but I just I don't think there's that many real racists anymore. I feel like there's a lot of people that like to hate on certain like they like they maybe f weight different groups differently. Like if you've had a lot of bad experiences with black people in your neighborhood, like maybe you're a little bit more hesitant around black people or a little bit less trusting, but that doesn't mean you just hate all fucking black people or hate all fucking... Like, there's... I just... I don't think there's any true... Like, there's that many true racists anymore. Like, for example, like maybe, maybe I'm a little bit racist towards Muslims because of all this fucking shit happening, but I don't think all Muslims are evil. There's... I, you know, I went to school with people that had Muslim backgrounds. They're fine. Whatever. I have a beer with them. Whatever. So maybe I'm like 5% racist against Muslims, but I just don't think there's that many real racists anymore. Like, I don't think this guy hates all black people just because he said nigger a bunch of times. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, I perceive him as a bigot racist asshole who wants to ruin other people's lives via the medium that he is so lucky that he gets to continue to exist on. No, I think he just wants to make a lot of money. I don't think he particularly wants to ruin oh, he, people. He went, but. Okay, so this guy is like working in a law office and he's making a boatload of cash and he wants to make more money. Okay. I don't know. That, I just, channel is, I just, that channel's kicking ass. I get it. I fucking do get it. I just don't like the guy. I think he's underhanded. And oh, he's underhanded life, for sure. In real life, he's a fucking scumbag. That's and if, probably and also if someone, true. If someone touches little children, they're a fucking scumbag too. And it's it's equivalent in my eyes. I don't want whatever. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to bring up was that Lion Maker made a video talking really? about this. Yeah, he made a video talking about this. <laughs> and I watched the that. whole thing. It's 13 minutes long. It's, just, it's called Minecraft Xbox Channel Update Hashtag Drama Alert. And you should really watch it. Because I don't feel like this guy is... He's not distancing, distancing himself as this I'm not a pedophile. Because he doesn't actually say... He doesn't actually act like an adult. He's trying to defend himself in this video, but he's like talking about it like it's still like this cartoon that he lives in. Like... Oh, you know, uh, blah, 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 blah. I, I can't really describe the way this guy sounds and the way he speaks because it's so bizarre. Because, you know, if you're, if you're a character, if you're playing a character and you're like, hey, what's up? It's me, Jimmy Gumballs. <laughs> then you turn that character off. You don't sound like that. This guy is still, like, in character talking. He's probably just trying to salvage his fucking YouTube channel. Well, and he's talking about how, like, uh, a lot of people aren't going to be on the videos anymore with him and whatnot. Um... But it's just, he doesn't ever come out of character and be like, 
listen, uh, this guy claims that I'm a sex pervert for fucking, little children. He's guilty. Is he guilty? Yes. Like, there has to be an investigation. He tweeted out pictures of this underage girl on his Twitter. Right. His Twitter I understand is still that. I understand that. He's guilty of... He's guilty using, in the eyes of the public. YouTube, in, the, in the YouTube public, he is guilty. Fine. That's all that matters. But he's not actually trying to salvage anything. He's just like... Oh, he's still in character. You know what I mean? You would think this guy would like make a video going like, "Yeah, I'm a you know, this happened." No, I'm I disagree. Of it. I guess I just disagree with the with your with your strat with the, with what I think. I think he's just trying to stay in character so he doesn't look guilty. Like if he made a video where it was like him all somber and fucking normal, and then people saw that, they're like, "Oh shit, maybe he no, really he can did be do somber. It. He can be normal." But I think he's just addressing it, but kind of pushing it off to the side. And, and, and he's pretending like it isn't a big deal to him when yes. in reality it's a fucking huge big deal yes and my my only opinion is staying in character while doing exactly that is is not how you fucking do it if you are being attacked like this his audience is primarily of, kids though a lot of evidence towards who cares if they're kids like but yeah if, they're if gonna he, think if differently if he, than us Eh, whatever he doesn't need to stay in character kids 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 are not the ones attacking him for being a, a child molester you know this this granted it's just i would have more respect for this guy if he just came out of character and said look well, of course stuff, he would stuff's yeah. going down right now the channel is going to slow down um and i hope to make a new video for you guys real soon but everything's gonna be slowing down for a while he just does this it's constant 13 minutes this guy never pauses when he speaks and he's in character constant and you can hear him dipping in and out of character and it's just like what's fuck? what's real with this guy like, are you seriously a fucking pedophile, or are you being like set up? What's mm, happening? You know I, what think, I mean, I think he seriously got caught. Well, you can have your fucking Twitter account hacked and then tweet like a little kid porn. This happens. Like, yeah, if that happened, yeah, I'll think, but there's that a happened, lot of stuff. Why isn't he saying there's, like, look, this happened? I'm not a real. Well, porn there's porn there's a lot of evidence against him. It's not just the Twitter stuff. I, I don't know about all the stuff specifically, but. My understanding of the situation is this guy got caught red-handed as fuck. Like, he was covered in red paint. Like, not just red-handed. He just... Yeah, this dude is... This dude's not a good guy. Yeah. I'm not denying that he's not, like, into touching little kids. Because there's one story about he was going to be at a convention and a little kid was like, Oh, you're going to be there? Cool. Well, I, I can't get in. And the kid's like, Oh, or he's like, Well, I'll get you a ticket in. It's fine. Oh, okay, but I can't stay like in the in the city that it's happening in because he lives quite far away. So his parents would just drop him off and then come pick him back up. And Lion Maker then said, "You can stay. With you me. can stay. You can stay in my little apartment that I, or my hotel room or whatever." And the, the the screenshots of him talking to the kid, I'm like, "Yeah, okay, that's it. You're guilty." However, it's still fucking weird how this guy's going about doing it. It's just like I think he's just trying to salvage it in the best way he knows. He cannot to. salvage it. That that's a fallacy. If you don't know, I'm not saying he can. I'm just saying that's what he's trying to do. Yeah. I don't know. It just rubbed me the wrong way. So I just wanted to talk about that. But yeah, hopefully yeah. nothing. Hopefully what I think is happening isn't actually what starts to happen. Because I mean, once you've you got like your big view videos, like, oh, I caught Lion Maker, big view videos, and all this shit. Like once your big money making thing, because if this this Keenstar guy just wants to make a boatload of money all the time. Once your fucking bread's buttered and you got no one to blame for being a pedophile or being I, something else. I don't know. I think his, his I think his fucking uh, channel model is brilliant. There's always going to be drama. Like, there's it's always going to happen. Yeah, but it's like you. It might not be as juicy as some guy being a fucking actual pedophile, but I think there's no. always going to be drama. Yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of people showing up because this guy's got, like, a team of investigators that, like, find out shit. It's like, okay, well, now you've got that audience right there waiting for the next big news bad thing that's going to happen youtuber related like who's the next pedophile and i think at some point in time we will find out that <laughs> this there's not going to be like, any minecraft youtubers left <laughs> well that's what i mean i mean <laughs> i'd be scared if i were an entertaining U minecraft youtuber because then it's like now what yeah there is a bit of a microscope on you now but is that bad i don't know see i've dealt with so much drama that i like i i, I got swifty banned like, like I, I had everyone hate me for a, a while. I'm just and saying. I'm, if you're if you're a good dude, you know, you get past it. You know, there's been a lot of YouTubers that have gone through plenty of drama, and 
you know, the What's storm this? passes. If you really are innocent, or if you really are a good guy at heart, the storm passes. It always does. Yeah, but, but unless you're internet. actually guilty and fucking kids, then the storm probably won't pass for you. I'm just saying I don't want something in the future to pop up that's, uh, that is Lion Maker is innocent of being a child molester and all of this quote-unquote evidence is fabricated so that Drum Alert can have something to talk about. Mm, I don't think that would happen just because there's so many people that watch that show that somebody would call it out. Like but, what if the, so, but what if somebody called it out and pe- everyone was like, no, nah, fuck you, it's real. I, I choose to believe it because how can a nearly no, one million subscribers I don't think that's true because so many people, be there's, there's such a huge group of people that would want it to be a conspiracy that they would... I, I think if it was fake, then it would be... Yeah, we'd know about it. Right. Well, I'm kind of on the fence about it until I hear news, like real world news, that this guy, line Maker, is actually put well. Like I'm, I understand. I lean towards it. I'm pretty sure he is, but uh, if there's no actual like this guy got convicted, then you know what the fuck was that all for? You just destroyed his YouTube channel, and now you can do that to anyone you want. So that was yeah. it. I actually, there was a period of time where like I was watching drama alert videos, and I'm like, I like this, but in very short period of time, I started going like, wait a minute, there's a pattern here that I don't like. And so that's why I wasn't watching. Yeah, I don't watch the videos that much. I'm just I'm just familiar with the dude. Can you hear um, can you hear those kids? Yeah, I heard I heard something. I didn't know what that Fucking was. Kids. I don't want anybody thinking I have any little kids. That's why you hate drama alert. You're secretly a fucking child pornographer. I don't want Guild Wars Two player. I don't want Keenstar and his You don't want Keenstar to make a Dante pedo video. Yeah, because I mean why would he? To tear down my fifty thousand subscriber channel? I mean that's scraping the bottom of the barrel, man. He has, the, yeah, yeah. All right, well, um, I don't, I don't have anything else I really want to talk about. We've been, this is probably our longest podcast. We've been flowing. Um, you got anything else you want to hit on? Or we're is about, that, we're about hitting three hours. We've had close. Holy to shit! I didn't realize it was that long. Uh, uh, no, if if I didn't bring up the whole Keenstar thing, we would have been like at two hours. I, I, I don't care how long it is. It's it's fine. I, I think it's good. I remember saying like, this is gonna go by quick or whatever. But yeah, no, there's really nothing else. I'm just looking forward to Pocket Morty's and yeah. You got anything? You got anything you want to pimp out before? Uh, we, yeah, we close yeah. It? Um, my stream, it's twitch.tv slash Dante, and I've been streaming lots of other stuff other than Guild Wars 2. It's mainly Guild Wars 2 stuff, but you know, um, when I'm streaming other games in the future, 2016, I feel like is going to be a really good year for me as far as streaming because I'm starting to really like it and get better at it. And yeah, other than that, videos will come shortly. Uh, I'm still working on some stuff that I have to deal with. Cool. Um, the only thing I got to pimp out, I'm going to be putting up a uh, an apartment tour video that might come out before you even see this. It depends on if YouTube wants to be take forever. Uh, so check that out if you haven't seen that. And that's that's all I got. Uh, so that's it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed Hivemind uh, 8. Mm-hmm. Guess we're done. See you guys next week. Next week. Peace.